All right, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the old, the old podcast. We're back. We got Marsman Gaming joining us today, and we got Depresso himself. So I mean, it doesn't Hell really yeah. get any better than having Depresso. So you know, um, there's there's a good amount of topics this week. You know, we got Halo. Everybody loves Halo, and you know, I, I think that's the only topic you even need. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh no there, there's a decent amount of stuff to talk about but uh yeah we'll just we'll just go ahead and hop in before we do marsman thanks for joining us what have uh what have you been up to these days man it's been one like hell of a ride this week there's been so many games been playing and uh i always thought that 2023 was the gaming year we i think you guys talked about it on on the show recently that it was a lot of games but I've been playing so much games this past few weeks, this start of the new year, but it's been, it's been great, but I really appreciate you guys having me on some, if some, uh, some, like a dragon I've been playing some, uh, oh. you know, I'm looking forward to persona three reloaded. Uh, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be fun. I'm a big persona fan. So being able to dive back into that series is going to be great. And obviously, like you said, halo, man, you gotta, anytime mm-hmm. halo comes out, it's always a topic of discussion. So, you know, it's been a lot of games, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So, a lot of stuff in the pipeline. Yeah, I feel like the start of the year ended up a little bit busier than I thought it would. I thought it would. Uh, yeah, I thought it would be. It's usually pretty slow, but there's been there's been some decent stuff so far. Uh, I forgot to mention Depresso is Jared. In case uh, in case anyone hey was guys. wondering, his 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 huh. webcam is dead. So we replaced him with the one and only, the legend himself. You know, like it's it's it doesn't get any better than Depresso. So. All right. Well, we can go ahead and uh, we'll just go ahead and hop on in. So I figure the first thing, you know, maybe we talk about is good old Suicide Squad. Jared's been playing a bunch of it. He's been grinding for like 24 hours straight for some reason. Uh, I think the rest of us, I don't know about you, Marsman, but I know me and BK have been waiting because, well, BK tried to pay $100 to play, but he got boned. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, I was for pathetic. pre-order only. Yeah, you got screwed there. But yeah, so we, I, we've we been waiting. I think it comes out like tomorrow sometime, so we'll check it out. But Jared, give us, I mean, I've seen obviously all the discourse on Twitter, you know, it's not, it's not looking too great. A lot of people have issues. Some people say like combat's kind of fun but it kind of teeters out toward the end but yeah give me give me your opinion what's what's suicide squad do you, do you like it i do li- okay how, how how should i put this i don't hate it i think that's the better way to put it. i don't hate it i don't dislike it but i don't love it because there's so much potential in this game that's just squandered away through some just pointless design choices i guess you could say so basically like when you're playing through the game like First and foremost, it's a looter shooter, right? That's like the main core mechanic of the game. It's earning loot, going through and completing missions and defeating enemies and all that stuff and earning that loot. But the problem is the game is so generous with loot. I've never seen anything like it for a looter shooter. I got some of like I got weapons after like the second mission that I used through the entire campaign. I didn't need any other weapons. Everything that dropped wasn't better than those drops. Mm. They had the best damage numbers through the entire campaign for me. Nothing dropped better. Mm. So it's like I was missing that that progression through the entire game that you would expect from a looter shooter where you slowly build up over time and you get that better gear and you get that like satisfying experience of slowly becoming more powerful through the gear side of the progression. And it's just... It doesn't exist in Suicide Squad, or at least I got insanely lucky somehow that I just had the best gear from the start until I got to the end game and could actually start farming for like this high end gear that's like themed around different villains like Bane with like set bonuses and stuff like that. And just other aspects of the game are also like super, how would you say, for giving in terms of the uh, looter shooter genre where like you can customize your weapons in ways that i haven't really seen like usually you'd have to grind for like a freeze weapon or a fire weapon or a toxic weapon and in suicide squad you could switch those on the fly with any of your gear for like a small like cost amount and you get like a discount if you do it back at your base but you could also do it like mid mission while you're out there grinding away it's like it's like they said you know we want to make a Looter shooter, but we don't want any of the grind the looter shoot really has. It's until the right. end game, so it's just like, it's like they didn't want to make a live service game. It, like uh, it's just so strange. 
The reason for that was due to the backlash from the NDA test. A lot of the people obviously are fans of the Arkhamverse stuff. And the I also think what you're experiencing is most of the team left about halfway through the development after the Superman game was canceled. So you're left with people that probably had a... That's why it's in Metropolis and why the Metropolis city looks so good and the rest of the game kind of feels detached from it. It's because it's a different, you know, different set of devs, so... I think I mean, that, that issue happens a lot in gaming now where a bunch of devs leave and then they're left with some scraps and uh, the producer's like, all right, shit something out for us. We'll make it a hundred bucks. Uh, who gives a fuck if we give it to IGN? <laughs> you know, we'll make some return I on mean, this. Yeah, I mean, that's true. And, and that's the thing about the Metropolis City is that like the missions and stuff just, I don't want to say they feel out of place, but they're so samey. It's like, okay, the van will make this path through this part of the city, defend it okay, now let's do this exact same thing over in this part of the city. And then there's just like no variance to the missions. It's like defend the van or whatever, escort the van or deliver stuff to the van. And the van is in everything. Like the van is all over the place. The van is the main character in the fucking video game. That van is top notch. Like it, it's, it's part of your life while you're playing the game. But like overall though, like the game in general, like outside of obviously like the repetitive missions and stuff and the weird kind of grind for loot that's like too forgiving. Like the story wise, it it's it's kind of all over the place, like in terms of like the motion capture animations and voice mm -hmm. acting and the way like that stuff's delivered. It's it's some of the best I've seen in a video game, but there are parts in the story which I won't spoil here that feel very, I don't want to say unfinished, and I don't want to say the story is not cohesive from start to finish, but it just feels like there's some context that needs to be added in in some of these moments that could have made them way better from like a build up perspective. Like, up to the flash is really good, but once you get past the flash, the game just kind of goes all over the place story wise. So, that was a little disappointing. And also, the final boss fight of the game. Is the most disappointing thing I've ever seen in my entire I've, I've life. I've heard I've heard people talk about that. I'm gonna spoil it. I don't fucking oh. care. You fight the Flash again. That's it. You fight the oh first boss. God. That's it. <laughs> there it is. Good luck, guys. I don't care. <laughs> it's just the Flash again. I, I thought I thought the final I thought the final boss would be that you beat the glitch that makes you win the game in the very beginning. I thought that was the. Uh, yeah, that was no, the no, point no, of the no, game. No, we don't, no we, we, we don't do that here. No, you've just, it's just the flash. Oh, there's a little <laughs> more to it than that, but it, it's, it's just the same fight you did before. So, yeah, so I, I like the, I like the premise of what they're trying to do with the story because it, it does, there are like comics that dive into that type of scheme and an idea, which is, yeah. it's going to be a dark game. And, and there are a lot of people on, on, uh, on X or on Twitter that are upset that they saw justice league die. I mean, it's, it's in the title. Like, you know that they're trying to kill the <laughs> Justice League. You I know, like, the if problem he, yeah. is they're, they're doing stuff with the characters that doesn't... I, I think yeah. I yeah. think they fucked themselves over by saying it's in the Arkham universe and people have a certain expectation of that. Yeah. And not, I th uh, that's why I don't yeah. like... It's, well, you know, I, we've, oh, the spoilers yeah. well, are everywhere. It, the, oh, some yeah. of the and, deaths are just so yeah. unceremonious well, and, like, out of character. Well, I, I will say this. I, I watched some clips on Twitter of people posting stuff like, oh, how could this guy, you know, do this? And it's like when you actually get a little more context to the scene, it's not as bad as it's portrayed. Like, I'm not saying it's I'm not saying the deaths are good, but I'm not saying they're as bad as people make them out to be. And once you actually finish the story, there, there comes a moment when you're like, everything that just happened doesn't really matter in uh, a sense, that's, that's so good to hear. Uh, hopefully they. So, so let's I, let's just say they got some. Uh, I I don't want to say it. Let's just say there's a lot more, <laughs> but then what's been I, shown. Yeah, I hope the team comes back and makes that Superman game because if, uh, apparently Warner Brothers just said it's impossible and no one would want to play it. We have to use our other IP. I don't know why why they I, they people would want to play Superman game. I know they haven't made one in a long ass time. But people have been clamoring for more of those like the Arkham type of games, just in, with different characters. And I, and I agree with you that the fact that they said this was going to be a part of the Arkham universe kind of screwed themselves over because mm -hmm. then you know a lot of people know what happens with like Batman. I'm not going to ruin it or anything, but 
they felt like that was kind of a betrayal to that series. And, and, and they could have done so much better with them like for themselves if they just said this is a separate universe and everyone would have been okay with a lot of the stuff that was going on yeah. because cause at least then if you know the, some characters are a little bit different, they could say, yeah, this is a different universe. I know that the whole uh, Joker... Uh, Joker fiasco making Joker mm-hmm. look like he's a completely different character um, makes a lot of people upset about like, um, what's going to happen, you know. <laughs> well, well and uh, I, mean, I didn't know that. I, I th- he died in the other games. <laughs> yeah, but he's coming back. I think is it a different Joker or something? It was. It was like the, I saw oh, some trailer um, about it. Yeah, they already. They already. Yeah. They announced that it's literally their first live yeah. service DLC, dude. It's the Joker, and he yeah. he looks not. Like, I mean, you know, not like he looks. You know different. how. You know, uh, you know, different universes. I don't know. You know, things work out in oh, certain okay. ways. But, 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 anyways, I was gonna say though, it. I really do wish this would have been like a Suicide Squad game in a sense. Like, I haven't played the Arkham games. I really want to play them now, though. Like, I really do. Like, yeah. I got this urge for it. But I think it would have been just cool to just have a game with all these characters, like escaping the Arkham Asylum or wherever they're at, you know, escaping mm-hmm. prison together. And that was kind of what the game was about. I think that would have been an interesting game. So I don't know. And that's the thing, like the game, it just, the characters are cool, but I just feel like you never really get to I, experience them. I, and wonder, like, I wonder if when I play, cause I've played all three of those games. I wonder if I'll have a different experience in that regard from you. You, you probably will, because there are definitely a ton of callbacks all over the place to mm-hmm. the Arkham games that you will definitely, you know, pick out that I didn't. I, I think when you brought up the progression, um, obviously I haven't played the game yet, but I, I, I read the, the stuff about the NDA and some of those people were saying like, the whole point of those other Batman Arkham games was something similar to like a Devil May Cry where it's a, the old Batman games were easy. You know, you could just button mash square through it and, you know, beat it but it was the whole i'm looking cool and that's why all the reviews say i feel like batman is you're you're doing shit intentionally so that you fit the character in the universe and i think they pussied out of the gear progression so that people didn't bring that up because you just want to look cool well yeah and and that's the thing right the the different characters like in terms of the movement like boomerang throws the boomerang the teleport around uh dead has the jetpack, Harley Quinn has the bat grapple and stuff like their movement options feel very different. Like each character feels unique in that regard, but in terms of just like the shooting and stuff, it all feels very samey in that mm-hmm. regard. And at the end of the day, the gameplay ends up feeling very similar to one another just because of that. Like even with all the little details you can like mess with within the characters, like skill trees and stuff, you just never really feel they just never really feel that different from one another outside of just the movement options. So that was you know, for me really disappointing. You know what's crazy is in those Batman games they had DLCs where you played as Harley Quinn or Robin or something. And you, if you look at it, you'd be like, "Wow, this gameplay looks almost identical to Batman." Because of their gadgets, they actually were incredibly different. And it you never felt like I'm using the same character, even though it was probably the exact same thing. And then they just added some animations and maybe a a new yep. way a gadget and works. See, and this, see, and that's the way the movement is, right? Because of their gadgets, the movement feels so different with the characters. Like mm-hmm. you do not move through the world the same with each one of these characters. You just don't. It's completely different. But everything else is just like, like, and, and it's funny that you say that because uh, Harley Quinn, her her role is like a like a cartwheel, right? Yeah, she her did dodge, that in the, whatever you want to call it. in the DLCs as well. But but the other three characters, they all have the same role animation. So it's like they didn't do anything <laughs> special with those three. Over. Is there yeah, only, so it's just like there's only four characters. Yeah, there are only four characters. So there's there's Shark, I, we'll Boomerang, s- Harley Quinn, and then and uh, Deadshot. Deadshot. Oh, okay, okay. Did they explain why he's and, black? By the way, there's he was a white there's guy a fun, for three games. Uh, uh, so there's a joke at the beginning of the game that's fucking great. All right, I don't want to spoil All the right, moment, but it's, so they do it's, address it's, it. It's, it's funny. It's funny. It's it's so that's, funny. That's good to hear. So, so I, I don't uh, want to say nothing. Jared, let me, let me ask you this. So obviously, like, most of the discourse, it, it just popped into early access. So, like, most of the discourse has been around, like, the, the campaign, right? 
But if if we're like yeah. if we're being honest, this is supposed to be like a looter shooter, destiny ass, like division type game. Like you're not supposed to play the campaign and then just peace out. So what what is there to do once you like complete the campaign? Like do they have or is there like dungeons or raids? Yeah. Like okay. is there yeah. does it All seem right. like so, there's replayability? Uh I mean <sighs> I mean, yes and no. So basically, like the way, like the way that systems work, is basically your op optimal goal at the end of the game or after you beat the game is to obviously to build up your gear, and you do that through like different missions, and you basically play that mission on the hardest difficulty and then you unlock the next tier and you keep climbing up those tiers that get harder and harder and harder and you get better and better gear as you go up and that's right. like that's how the end game works so and it's honestly like... it's pre-season one because season one starts in march so yeah. it's like there's going to be more so i can't i I don't really know how the end game is going to play out, but right now there's just simply that. And then there's actually, once you max out a character to level 30, cause that's the max level, you unlock the squad tree, which applies effects to your entire squad. Mm -hmm. And that squad tree levels up as you level up each character. So squad tree max level is 120. So each character you level up, goes towards that squad tree. So if Harley Quinn is level 30 and Dud Shot is level 10, my overall squad skill tree level is 40. So you kind of get that end game progression of max leveling all characters to get all those bonuses to kind of help improve everyone's combat abilities. So to me, but like it's, it's... end game missions, there's like, there's like three different missions. Okay. And then, yeah, there's like three missions you just kind of repeat over and over, and you can't just play those missions. You have to like go earn points from these other missions and then spend them to go into those missions to play those missions, which uh, that's just so fucking awkward. Like, why is this a thing? And then, of course, see, I can't talk about one other thing because it's massively a spoiler, which is what the game's like building to at the end game. So let's just say I think, I think i get the hint of it and it sounds interesting if it is what i think it is so let me, yeah uh, let's just say you're you're fighting a lot of a certain guy <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> let me let me ask this so like obviously another perk of like looter shooters is there's usually like build diversity like whether it's talents or weapons like think how many different ways you can play destiny or like if you like play Diablo how many different ways you can build a character right does that exist in this game or does like is Harley Quinn on just play like mean, Harley Quinn every time does the shark dude play like the shark dude every time uh basically and this is obviously something I'm addressing in my review a little bit but that's that's the thing that disappointed me most like when you play Destiny each class feels different they don't mm -hmm. feel the same they feel very different and your beginning character to your end game character feel completely different where in this game outside of those movement options and some just like little different things in the skill trees your build diversity really just kind of comes down to those villain weapons that you get with the different perks like i said bane set if you have like three of his pieces equipped whether that's like two different guns and a melee weapon or like a couple different mods and then like a shield cell or whatever you'll get those like perks or whatever it, it just comes down to the different afflictions in the game that you build on your gear so are you going for like fire on your gear if you're, are you going for ice on your gear but in terms of like how the character plays that really never changes it, it's just mm. the same from start to finish it just i don't know do you want to burn stuff or do you want to freeze it i mean <laughs> there you go yeah <laughs> i mean it yeah I, I guess, like, I, I'll hold my opinion. I'll just talk about it next podcast when I actually play it. But it, it sounds like it's just going to end up, like, one of those live service games that people play for, like, two months, and then we just, like, forget about it. Like the Avengers game? Like, I yeah. don't know why they did yeah. this after that yeah, game was, was so poorly I was, received. Yeah. I was going to say, it kind of remind me of the Avengers game when and I was looking at the gameplay of it. I mean, it looks it looks more, a little more fun than the Avengers, but I feel like Suicide Squad is getting more kind of crapped on, mainly because... They're changing up a lot of like the character. I guess you would say what a lot of people were mad about is how like like I think we've already talked about how characters die the way they did, and like Marvel's Avengers, I think they stuck closer to what the lore of the characters were, and that maybe yeah. that's why they're not as angry about Marvel Avengers being not as good of a game, right? Really, overall right. versus Suicide Squad, it's already gotten like you know bombarded right before it even released. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. I, I saw a lot of people saying that Marvel Avengers did like a better job, like being like more 
faithful to the characters but let's on on it let's like also be real you would expect more out of rocksteady than you would crystal dynamics right like rocksteady yeah, had like yeah. one of the greatest mm. trilogies in superhero games and like don't get me wrong the tomb raider games were good but they're, they're not on the same level right so i think mm. that's probably part of it too because obviously the avengers completely flopped but like I don't feel like building into it, there was like as many people like talking about it. Whereas I feel like with the, with the studio Rocksteady, I understand a lot of people left, but like with the studio name, you expect a better game. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, and so yeah, when, when it comes yeah. out and it's like comparable to that, it's like we've 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 missed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, that's, and that's what sucks, right? Like I haven't played any of their other games, but. Like, when you're playing Suicide Squad, you could feel the quality of the studio in the actual game, right? The mechanics feel really, really good. Everything is super polished. Like, this isn't a badly made game. There's not really any kind of, like, I'm trying to think. I don't think I ran into any, wait, I ran into one glitch. Actually, I lied. There was one glitch I ran into where I did the final story mission and none of the cutscenes played. Nothing like oh. the game just completely broke no, down, no, and then no. I had to restart it. But that was it. It only happened one time. It was the final mission. Outside of that, though, I I ran into absolutely nothing. So, like, I could see the quality of the studio there, and then of course, like I said, the animations and the characters and stuff, mm -hmm. all of the work well, that the, went into that. The art team stayed. I believe most of the studio now is at uh, Insomniac working on Wolverine, which is no. no well, when was Wolverine supposed to come out? That's like next year, right? Okay, yeah, that, I that think one, next okay, year. I'm thinking, I, we haven't heard, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking Blade. That's like fucking what four or five years out oh, or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> that they, yeah, fucking, that, they didn't even, they didn't even we'll, say we'll anything about it. Yeah. They just put a picture. They're like, yeah, we're making a game. Oh, yep. Yeah, Blade's coming <laughs> out at some point. Oh, you're right, because Wolverine yeah. had all the leaks. It's like playable. It's just kind of yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so yeah, I looked up. You can actually look up like the the player base and stuff for Suicide Squad. Uh, it peaked at seventy one hundred players on Steam. Granted, that's seventy one hundred people who paid a hundred dollars. But I don't. know. Do you guys remember when Starfield had the early access? That shit popped, and Starfield oh, didn't God, even turn yeah. out to be a great game. It was pretty average. So like, yep. I, 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 if I remember correctly, on Steam with Starfield, which was on Game Pass too. This game's not on Game Pass. It was like, wasn't it like? 200k or something just people that paid early mm -hmm. access to play on steam so yeah the sure. fact that this peaked at 7100 has me a little concerned for uh i saw that that one tweet by you like know Paris what, though? or some shit I, I, I will say this if suicide squad pulled like uh let's just say it never got delayed and they never really showed gameplay for it and it like shadow dropped like hi-fi rush or something like that yeah. I feel like this game would have a wildly different perspective or narrative around it. Like, I still think people would shit on the game after playing it for certain reasons. Yeah. But I think overall, it wouldn't be as hateful as what you're seeing right now. Because it's, I mean, there's people just like, God, why would you play this shit game? God, yeah, I mean, it's so it's, glitchy and it doesn't work. Yeah, the servers hateful. are always shutting down. <laughs> like, I, 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 fuck it, man. I've. I played for 15 hours straight and I never got kicked off the server one time. So well, I don't it know. was really bad. Seems to work fine for me. Also, yeah, but even the then, that was for a couple hours for 90 I, people in New Zealand. Well, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't working almost that first full day, right? Uh, no, they just never tweeted out when they fixed it. Hmm. <laughs> that's, they that's just awful. like people started playing it. They're like, oh, it's working. Why didn't anyone say anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if you look uh if you look on good old steam you can see um like it's the is it the eighth best seller so it's like under tekken which released recently it's under enshrouded it's obviously it's under power world it's under persona so it's kind of everything that's releasing in the same cycle has kind of shit on it so i don't know i guess well, tekken's I mean, an amazing oh, yeah. game by the way if any of you guys I mean, to like be fair. fighting games I don't, but I've heard it's really good. But hey, come on, te yeah, Tekken Eight. I, I heard a lot of great things about Tekken Eight. I love all Tekken games. I feel like you can actually play Tekken Two um, from the PlayStation and still have a good time. And Tekken Eight, I was actually just playing it a little bit, and you know some of the combos still hold up. It's like how those Street Fighter games. Once you have like a good fighting game like that, it it doesn't age. It's good yeah. graphics. I was I was such a fan of Street Fighter Six when it came out, and it's, it's surprising that of the three big boys of fighting games, that Mortal Kombat was took the back seat compared yeah. to 
Street Fighter Six and Tekken Eight. I was actually surprised about that, but you know, I think I I really love Street Fighter Six. I play a lot of that game. Um, it was a lot of fun, and I'm not even a big fighting game guy, but I was able to jump in and actually not suck ass. Yeah, they so. didn't they win the accessibility thing at the Game Awards? Yeah, they did. They did because yeah. they they create change up their entire uh, entire scheme of how they play. Like they even have like automatic, which is like that's like the Gerber baby mode, where it's like yeah, hey, you just press a button and it automatically offer... like it automatically hits it for you all the combos. So, mm -hmm. I, so I was doing the newer one, so it was like I had to do some button combinations, but it was a lot easier versus yeah. like the the like the the classic version which was Te like the, Tekken you know. 8 has that same thing and it definitely does help i i'm a fan of the gerber baby modes being introduced to these <laughs> games <laughs> yeah i uh i i mean that's like one of the reasons i never really play fighting games is because i just don't want to mm -hmm. go through the effort of learning all this stuff so <laughs> maybe i maybe i play in, in baby yeah. mode but the only fighting fighter man yeah, didn't they do the same thing? Just hold a button yeah. and it does for you. Yeah, but <laughs> the only the only fighting game that I ever like really played, like other than Smash, which is different, like a totally different genre almost, was yeah. one of the on three sixty. It was like Soul Calibur four or some shit, and all I played was this person that had nunchucks, and I just spammed one button and pissed off my friend. So I was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I I I just I play as King because he looks like a big kitty cat, and I just spam grabs, and grabs are super strong in Tekken eight, so he's actually an S tier. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's you know, it's bad when you jump into a fighting game and like a first match. I think I won online. And I was like, "Yo, I might be good at this game." Then I get matched with a guy that's playing classic, yeah. <laughs> and you just get clapped. Like the guy just like it's like abused me in front of everybody. I was like, "This hey. is I can't I can't do that. I can't do that." Again. Hey, you you don't know broken fighting game character to you're playing as Donatello on the Super Nintendo, spinning his stick oh, at the God. enemy over yeah. and over again. <laughs> Kind of the problem with fighting games, right? You just play, you're like, oh, I love this game. Then you play against one dude that actually plays the game. And then you're like, I never want to play this piece of shit game ever. <laughs> That's why I've never gotten into them. I just, I, I feel like I, I, I'm surprised how well some of these fighting games sell. Cause it's just like, I mean, I guess they're putting more effort into like single player stuff these days. Like Street Fighters campaign was actually like pretty good, supposedly. But I, mm -hmm. I feel like they're so like, so inaccessible. Like you just hop online maybe play like one game against someone that's of relevant skill. And then the, the problem with fighting games is like, it's a one V one game. So even if someone's only a little bit better than you, they'll still beat you like 80% of the time. Like the, <laughs> the, the skill gaps in that game are like in, in most fighting mm -hmm. games are like, so they're so big that like, just cause someone like, it, I, I feel like in if you play like a shooter or something, right? Like you can play Call of Duty and, and you can shoot someone that's like a sweat every once in a while and kill them. But like if you play some dude that's cracked at Tekken, you're just losing ten out of ten. <laughs> oh, you know, it's so I, true. I I actually played a guy because they have like an Elo rating, and I am one thousand Elo, which is what you start at. And I played against a dude that's fifty thousand Elo, so he should have kicked my ass. There's a thing called like Rage Art, so once you're low health, you can throw out like a move and. It has such a long wind up and it has like a little cutscene before it basically. But if you land it, you can kill him. And I actually beat him by landing two of those just out of pure luck. Oh my God. And my ELO now is fucking cracked. And I, I don't even want to play another <laughs> another match because I know it's going to put me against those people because he thinks I'm good. <laughs> dude, that guy was probably so pissed that you beat him, too. Oh, dude, I, I literally had a sliver of health. I wish my I wish my game record worked. I He had me on, I think, one HP. And I just fought. I was like, you know what? Fine. I'll just use this move. If he runs into it, I'll win. Sure enough, he's probably like, oh, this 1,000 ELO shitter just ran at me. <laughs> yeah. It was funny because I was actually thinking about, um, like, obviously, like, fighting games are still fairly big. I mean, they're kind of their own niche, but they all, all the big ones still seem to, to sell pretty well, and, like, a lot of people play them. But it's kind of funny because I, I kind of equate, like, the fighting genre to the RTS genre with, like, StarCraft and those games back in the mm -hmm. day. And I feel like that genre is just dead, but the fighting game genre has just, like, continued to... It's probably grown in recent years, if we're being honest. Probably because like, they've made it more accessible. Yeah, and I guess that's true. Like, focused. Yeah, that's that's probably the big thing, because I... But, but at the same time, like, the RTS games used to use... Like, especially StarCraft or, like, Warcraft and stuff had good campaigns. Like, it's not like you only had multiplayer, though, uh... I remember getting my shit rocked in StarCraft 2 multiplayer when I tried to play. 
I remember I looked up like one strategy. I was playing Protoss, mm-hmm. and I I I, I, lo- I like looked up a strat, and it was just some cheese rush. And if my cheese rush didn't work, I 100 percent lost. I had I had no clue how to play anything past the early game of StarCraft II. Mm-hmm. So like, so if my if they stop my rush, I would just like I just forfeit. <laughs> I wouldn't even try to come back. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Um, what? Well, I was, was a little tech in. Um, why don't we Why don't we talk about you know the the biggest game in gaming, and that's a uh, you know oh good old Power God. World. So, Marsman, why don't Why don't you go first? What do you, What have you been thinking of Power World? Power World is a, a really fun game. I feel like it's. I, I did a whole like crew review of it, and and I we had like basically a crew of four all joined up in one world. I also did my own world to see kind of how you jump into it, and it's like one of those simple games that is just easy to pick up and just have fun and play. Like, I feel like it's it's enjoyable because it is close enough to Pokemon that it's it's that mirror image to what we want to see with what Pokemon Arceus should have been. But it's just, it's different enough where it's just fun and unique. Like, it's just Pokemon with guns, right? And I feel like that was kind of one of the appeals that a lot of people had in the beginning. But you can create your own world. You can go and, and explore it as many ways you want. Sure, there's a lot of glitches still, and they, I know they're fixing that stuff on the daily. But I think it's just been like a lot of fun to just be able to kind of relive that that I guess that old Pokemon feeling when you were growing up and just want to do an open world and just go catch, go gotta go, gotta catch them all, you know. And I'm like, I'm enjoying it. Like I, I feel like this is like a surprise. And on if you have Game Pass, it's on Game Pass. So I was like, hey, I don't have to pay any extra price. I'm just going to go try it out. And I'm literally just cutting down trees and just have an entire community building up into like all this stuff for me. So I'm just like, this is actually pretty fun. I'm And I'm, I'm surprised. Like, this is, it's going to keep getting better. Like, I think roughly 60% of the game is complete. So it's like, imagine more of this. Like, yeah. what else are they going to add? Raid bosses now they're saying they're going to add in more areas to explore, more pals mm-hmm. to catch. Like, I think PvP is coming, too. Yeah, that's yeah. They, they added in. You know, I'm like, damn, if this game is like is, is just simple fun right now, it's 60, 60% complete, then, like, I can't imagine what's going to be when it actually is a complete experience. So get got to give the devs, like, a shout-out. I mean, it's it's fun. They got to fix the glitches. Make make console like equal to PC and the quality of the game, but damn man, it's it's a good time. I'm ha- I'm having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, so I'll say I'll uh, I'll caveat by saying I, I I've really enjoyed the game. I think it's really fun. I I've think, never seen a rash take to a game like this. I, uh, I think, I think in the last three same. years we've been yeah, playing games on, together. But on the other hand, when you say like you know it's sixty percent done, it'll get better. I don't know if it will. I think the fact that this game blew up and the fact that it's a functional video game is like if they yeah. try it again, I don't think it. <laughs> I, I think they I don't even think they ship a product like I think the fact mm-hmm. that this game works and like all the random systems that they hodgepodge together somehow <laughs> like flow together enough to play the game like I, I think they got insanely lucky. I think they threw a bunch of shit together. They found some assets and they threw in some Pokemon and somehow that just ended up fun. Like <laughs> I don't I with, with stuff like PVP and stuff like that, like it sounds cool in concept, but the like the net code is fucking horrible. And and I did see something that Xbox is supposedly helping them with like like optimizing their servers, but I mean, Halo Infinite is a Well, that Xbox should all game, be so. that should be epic, right? Cuz it's unreal. Didn't well, they rat them out on no, that maybe they're switching. <laughs> they, they, they yeah, yeah that, maybe but... they're taking the uh, the slip space engine. You know, maybe they're going to jump to the <sighs> slip space know, engine. I think that'll help. I, I, or, I think, or it could be that they're going to use uh, Xbox servers just for the Xbox consoles. I think. Maybe. I think I that's yeah, what it said. But yeah, and I and I agree with you. I, I feel like this game was definitely a, like a, a, a shot out of nowhere, and it just landed. And I think it's because all the Pokemon fans are frustrated, and you know, for yeah. for PC, they don't they never really got to have like a real Pokemon game unless you have like that's the not, emulators, right? That's and not so, true, though. We've we've had actual Pokemon clones on Steam that are way more Pokemon than this game. This isn't a Pokemon oh, the, game; like it's Tam-tam. Arc. Yeah, there's like Tem Tem, well, and there's been yeah, a bunch yeah. of other ones. Dude, I, I love Tem 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 is fun, man. I yeah. think to his point, he's trying to say I think Pokemon fans have wanted an evolution. Yeah, of no, the game. I, I I get yeah. that. Yeah, they, this yeah. definitely like took it to a different level, but I I don't know. It's I feel like somehow they made an arc clone and then all the Pokemon fans just like 
came in and they're like oh this is actually pretty mm-hmm. fun like you, you know, it turns out i like it i kind of like like babies for a survival game because I, I think mm-hmm. that's what it kind of is because like i don't mm-hmm. i don't care for survival games but i've really been enjoying this one but i think it's because a lot of the mechanics are pretty watered down and like you can make the pals do most of the shit for you which makes it a lot less tedious and, and i i think that helps plus like it's it's fun to just like run around and collect the different mm-hmm. pals and stuff like that but I don't know. Sons I, of the Forest also has a uh, a slave that you can use to do the tedious shit, and I think all survival games need at least you know one one slave at the base so that you can enjoy the the actual game. I don't I don't disagree with that. I think like having a companion system in a lot of these survival games would help because this is like the the least fun. Well, for me, the least fun part of a survival game is like smacking a resource or standing mm-hmm. and crafting something and holding a button on my keyboard. And in Power World, you don't have to do that shit. Now you can to like speed up progress a little bit here and there. But if you just want to run around and collect and and re and just like explore the map, then you can come back to your base and be like, oh, they got all the rocks and all the ore for oh, me. Now I'll, yeah. I'll now I'll progress again. If, well, if even if you don't want to. Uh, I was just going to say, even if you don't even want to craft stuff, go buy the guy that sells ammo and guns. Go yeah. buy, or go ca- not buy him. Not buy him. It's not slavery. Go catch the guy. I mean, that's not much better. Yeah, that sells that ammo be Go catch the, go, go, go catch the medicine guy and then just have him at your base. And okay, I got everything I need. So it's yep. just like the game is, it's something else. It, it wants you to break it. Yeah, I was it... going to say, I think if fighting games have evolved to have the Fisher Price button map, I think survival games having a dude that yeah. takes out the tedium of the game, that's that's how it evolves. I yeah, I, I agree with you there. And I I I have I have like I hope that that pocket pair can like actually continue to improve Power World because I think it's really fun. And there's obviously a ton of people playing. They made a boatload of money. So I hope that they can kind of figure out what what's going on and like actually improve because that that, let's be honest like there's so the game the game's like fun factor has completely overshadowed like the nine thousand different issues like the the pal ai is atrocious they get stuck in the base they don't do shit you want like they're just floating yeah, like yeah they do what? all right bro great awesome yeah no, just get down here and just complete the task please like it's like <laughs> yeah like, but it's like so, somehow despite all of that like it's just so fun that that obviously people like will complain about it a little bit here and there but for the most part everyone's having so much fun everyone's just enjoying the game so you don't even like you don't even bring that stuff up like yeah sure sometimes i would prefer if my pal would listen or like do the thing in the base i want him to like it'd be nice if he would smack the ore instead of smacking the same rock that i have seven thousand of but like it, it's just fun i don't I, it's it's an inch it's it's been a very interesting game to just to observe and see what happened because like Obviously, we there was a trailer like a year or two ago, and everyone's like, "Oh, Pokemon with guns!" Like, yeah, whatever. Like, it'll come out. Maybe, maybe you'll play it, right? And then it came out, and it was just instantly fucking massive. And it's like, I think maybe some of that was propelled by all the probably not even to be honest, like all the people trying to <laughs> trying to say they used AI and all that stuff. And it had mm-hmm. so much like so many people talking about it. Maybe that brought some more it's, eyeballs to it, or. It's the- it's the Twitter quote negative press that Hogwarts got too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, that sold really well too. But <laughs> I, I, I also think, yeah. Sorry, I, I also thought that the fact that they were closer to Pokemon, like everyone was looking at the fact that you could like, hey, this looks just like yeah. Lucario, or like, yeah, and that, good. that, yeah, and, and like that's the thing, like the the fact that there was a lot of them, a lot of the pals that were identical, and I think makes more people say, let me go check this out myself, and and I think that's kind of the funny part of the game it's just like you go see a you see like a pal and you're like i i know what pokemon that's supposed to be like i yeah. mm-hmm. i can tell what that is it's like but it's just funny to me like i i enjoy like the little like stupidness of the game like you said like even like the times where like my pal is like stuck behind two rocks i'm like where where's my guy supposed to be doing like all the water work and then i go <laughs> behind and i'm like dude and i had to pick his ass up and throw him back in like it's just like it's just the stupid fun like it, you enjoy it but i agree with you man like the the little things of like the glitches they get overlooked because it like it's just like it, you're just having a good time you know what i mean yeah. so I, I i like it for what it is at the moment hopefully they keep adding more yeah i'm, I'm gonna say something that like maybe will piss off some artists uh but 
Okay, well, first of all, like the the AI, <laughs> the AI stuff, like from from everything I can see, just seems completely false, right? But there's so many people still on Twitter that are like complaining that sure, while it might not legally be in the wrong, it's like morally in the wrong because they like, yeah, I mean, it's it's clearly inspired. Like you can tell who it is. But all I can think of is like. Rockstar has done this since GTA 3 with cars and no one has said a fucking word and that is the biggest franchise in gaming but some indie studio copies Pokemon that and for some reason that's the end of the world like someone's got to explain it to me because I I guarantee you the person who designed Pokemon spent less time on that than the dude who designed a Lamborghini so if we want to talk about stealing someone's (laughs) art and and like engineering let's go after fucking GTA all all you artists like if you're if you're gonna let's let's have some consistency I don't want to see GTA with a fucking car that looks like a Ferrari in GTA 6. Hey, can't have that if I can't have a Pokemon that looks a little bit like Pikachu. <laughs> but, but Rash, I can't put that in my Pokeball. So you can, you can I put it in your garage. It. You can drive it around. But that's, God damn it. It's not about that. It's about the Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, just, I, I think it might be because obviously like Lamborghini as a brand doesn't have like a, a like a ravenous fandom like Pokemon yeah. does. Obviously because it's a car. But it's just, to me it's like or it's it's so controversial or not controversial like it's so contradictory like this has been a thing that games have done since we had graphics like you just take yeah. inspiration from other things and sure instead of taking inspiration from real life this one took inspiration from another video game but like who cares <laughs> like i i don't it, know. yeah and i was going to say you you said this before there have been like hundreds of pokemon ripoffs or pokemon copies all over steam all over everywhere yeah. right and and you know, like why? And I said this before. It's like you know the difference between like Days Gone being a Last of Us ripoff and Pal World being Pokemon ripoff is that Days Gone was a scam, and because it was a scam, they're gonna call it out, and and, and everyone's gonna crap on it, right? But if the game was successful and not a scam, like you know, people just you should just let it have its run, right? Just like Pal World is a fun game. Just let it have its run. Like at the end of the day, it's not going to become like the greatest selling game of the year being Call of Duty. Like it's not going to do that, but it's going to be a fun experience for, you know, maybe half a year for a year, maybe. And, that, and then it'll die off. Like, it just, I mean, I feel like for even half a year, I think it won't last a whole year unless they really add some major changes to it. But, you know, like it's just going to it's it's a phase it's going to die down. And then, you know, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, remember that Power World game? It was like a Pokemon with guns. Yeah. Yeah, I, know, I, I also they, think they, they really benefited from putting it out in January because usually January is so dry and they just put it out and like everyone's like, oh, it's $30. I can play it with my friends. Like, fuck it. Let's do it. Like, there's not nothing else new really came out around it. I mean, yeah. like the Prince of Persia game from Ubisoft. Fuck, did, they but... have anything multiplayer to even play yeah. with anyone. They're probably like, oh, fuck, we guys, we could play games together again. <laughs> we can get off Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So I, it's it's been it's been an interesting game, but I I do really enjoy it, and I I hope they can improve it. Whether or not I really believe in them as a studio, I see like so many people on Twitter saying that Xbox should acquire Pocket Bear, and I'm like, all right, let's fucking hold the horses. Like, first of all, I I think we got to get over this thing where every time a studio makes a game, someone wants them acquired. Like, studios can just be studios. Like, you can publish their game, but you don't, don't have to fucking monopolies. buy them out. Like, you you they could yeah. publish the next Pocket Bear game, be my guest, but like, you don't have to purchase every dev that makes a game on your platform. Like, there's there's nothing wrong with like back in the day when you'd have a studio that would just pitch a game to multiple different publishers and whoever funded it is who they'd make the game for and they'd do it again next time because there's there's a there's a lot more they're more independent they do their own shit like obviously they have to get funding for their game but like you know when microsoft decides to lay off tons of people they're not actually a subsidiary so yeah. they're not just like oh we have no control in over whether or not there's layoffs so arash doesn't like his big uh triple a monopolies for some reason after all the layoffs weirdo dude i i, I don't like the big triple a monopolies because i feel like i don't get fucking video games anymore <laughs> like i don't it, i mean that's true you know, if you, if you, hey hey if you tried playing some single player rpgs maybe you'd have some <laughs> games to play bro even i can think of about 20 coming out this year yeah i mean there's there's a lot coming out i mean I don't know. I got, so, I got bad news, Arash. Baldur's Gate did really well. We're getting more of those. Oh, yeah. We're going to get a yeah. bunch of not good Baldur's Gates. And I, I oh, think right. it's going to... Yeah, I'm sorry. No more. 
I mean, it's going to be, we're going to get a bunch of probably bad survival games with pals too. Like yeah. any, anytime something does well, a bunch of people copy it and it's usually never as good as the, the person who did it the first time. So, I mean, here's the, th- here's the thing with Baldur's Gate though. I don't think that game is good because it has good gameplay. It's good because of the narrative and the fact that it's like one oh, yeah, of the most sure. in-depth RPGs you could ever play. I don't think other studios other than Larian are doing that. So you can you can make me some shit turn based RPG D and D style game, but without the all the the RPG stuff on the side, I will never play that game because I didn't enjoy mm-hmm. the combat at all in Boulder's Gate. And the only reason I played it for like ten plus hour like ten hours or so was because of I just like did the conversations. I was like, this is kind of fun. But yeah, the, the RPG elements were amazing, and I I can't wait for studios to be like, oh, they just really like turn based games. Yeah. Why didn't we do that? It's like, we've had those. I mean, I actually really like XCOM, but like you don't yeah. see a fuck ton of like tactical XCOM style games because they're, they're niche. Like, I mean, we, we saw, I guess I I'll back, I'll back up. We've, we actually seen some of them pretty much completely flop. Like the studio that made XCOM made the, uh, fuck. What's that one called? They made one that's superhero themed and it, uh, Midnight Suns, oh, Midnight Marvel Suns. Midnight yeah, Suns, that, and it didn't sell well. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that, that game was weird. I played, I played it for three hours and I was like, okay, so the, I think what they wanted to do was their own thing. And then they got the Marvel license and they're like, oh, what if we did our own Marvel universe? And Marvel was like, yeah, I guess we got multiverse. We could do that. And then the game just kind of came out wonky because of it. Yeah. Well, I, even, uh, even like, good games like in that genre like the uh what was it the mario rabbits or whatever that game's fun ubisoft uh, but it also yeah like every like everyone who played it loved it but it didn't sell well so it's just like or the second one didn't sell well so i think it just shows you that there's just not a lot of people looking for that kind of game if i remember correctly though they Mm -hmm. had like weirdly high expectations for that game (laughs) like i I don't remember what the number was but they it seemed like way higher Mm -hmm. than it should have been yeah, yeah anyway, Marvel, I feel like a, a Nintendo property. Why didn't you guys sell 20 million copies? That's true. It, it, you know, I, I, I feel like there is a room for the turn-based games depending on the the series you're playing. Like I, you know, I'm a big like Paper Mario fan and and for a while like they started to just drift away from what the game was always like that turn-based story narrative games that were just funny and like has good narrative with it and they started doing like like the last Paper mario game which was the origami king was like like a it was just like a a chinese checkers like twisted origami turn-based mode which makes zero sense even though the story was solid but like the gameplay was just over the top like outrageously annoying it's like you know just go back to the basic turn-based and in some series i feel like it's good but in some cases, yeah, I can, I can feel like it's not going to sell as high as some others unless it has that, you know, added features to it. But in some series like Paper Mario, I feel like they they could go back to that or even like the Fire Emblem series. They always mm-hmm. used to be like that yeah. turn based, you know, like th- those will always sell well because they or they stick with what they're they're good at. But yeah, I feel like it depends. Like I, I played Mario Rabbits and I was like, hey, you know. It's unique. It kind of reminds me of like the South Park Stick of Truth or the uh, the separate butthole. Like th- those games were like pretty funny because they're good with the IP of South Park, but they mm-hmm. had turn based mechanics. And then now the new South Park game that's coming out, it's like a completely different like type of game. And you're like, why even break away from something that's working? You know, I'm like, it, there's spaces for turn based, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you got to give me a little bit more. Give me something that makes this more exciting or more unique, right? So I feel like it's a good balance. If you can make a good one, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I like them. I mean, they they have their place. I just, I, I think we're going to see a lot of people make them for the wrong reason. And that's because they're going to assume yeah. that's why Baldur's Gate became so massive. <laughs> when like, in reality, it wasn't. Like, you can make a good turn-based game and it, it can sell copies. Like, you named a bunch of franchises that are all turn-based and like, have sold perfectly fine. But I think they're just, we're going to see a lot of things that, that misunderstood why Baldur's Gate was so big. But yeah. uh, Mr. Mr. Pop Q. What have you what have you been up to? Let's this is He's the pop Q segment word, where where he tells Halo us he played MCC. Halo 3. Yeah. <laughs> um absolutely nothing. Nothing's changed. Oh wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think I've played uh MCC last week, so I haven't even been doing that. I played a little bit of CS2 with uh you and BK BK uh left us uh, hanging. He yeah. did. He fucking yeah, happened. I, All right. I played it again last night and got my shit railed. 
I was not having a good time. I watched BK get hit with a flash and a and a grenade in real time, and he <laughs> instantly uninstalled the game. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I also i I sent you a clip. I I, the, I don't understand why that's fun for anyone to have those. I I was on the dude is on my screen for literally six frames, and I died, and. It's not fun. Fuck Counter Strike too. I hope that game dies harder than it already is. I mean, it's. I was, well, I, I was on a I was on a losing streak, and we were finally gonna look like we were finally gonna win a game, and and you do that to me. That's just well, tragic, man. I will still like gameplay wise. I'll still take CS over Valorant any day of the week, man. The the only thing that I think Valorant has over CS is that their ranking system is still just better. Like even though Valve yeah. tried to redo it with their rating shit instead of just the ranks, it's still ass. Like <laughs> it's still like so bad. But at least Valorant has really cool the worst maps in a competitive FPS game, though. You don't like that. <laughs> Well, then again, we played Vertigo last night, so... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> as long as Vertigo kind of exists, I don't even know if I can make fun of Valorant maps. Once they get that out of there, maybe. I prefer maps like how Halo Infinite has its new map. Uh, it's, like, mildly forgettable? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unoffensive. What is the, how is the new map, guys? Is it is it good? I mean, Great? It's, fu it's fine. Everything like you hoped for? I, there's it's nothing. The there's nothing wrong with the map. It is a map. They tried like something kind of funky. You know, everyone goes invisible in the middle, and it's like a three lane map with like a little flair to it. It's fine. It's fun. I think. Yeah. I, there's really nothing more New to York. say. Like, it, it's not bad. It's not good. It is a Halo map. It does Halo map things. Your, it's your, all your new cosmetics don't look good. Invisible. It's also the but only no fucking see? content in the entire like. I dude. I. The more I think about it, the more I laugh. So, like, it's been three plus months since season five. Obviously, this should have been season six, but, you know, we've we've changed it to the content update cycle. In three months, they made a fucking map and some cosmetics and some forge updates. But, like, <laughs> I don't know why anyone yeah. thinks, like, that... Dude, the the updates for this game are going to be atrocious. This was the this was the rejigged season. This was supposed to be a season, and this is what they came out with. Wait till next time you get a content update, and they didn't have a battle pass full of shit that they can sell you in the store. Like it's going to be like two two skins and not even a map. Like that, I I have I have no hope for the next like couple years of Infinite. Like I think it's just done. No, yeah. So I I when I looked at Halo Infinite, I kind of said that this game was going to be a transition game to the next. When you release Halo Infinite or, or Halo Infinite Plus or whatever you want to call it, whatever the next game is going to be on the uh, Unreal Engine. But I feel like what they decided to do was take out seasons and just took all the remaining content they made and just make these month and a half or you know six week content drops because they don't want to call it seasons and give you 100 tiers. They want to just give you 20 tiers a pop. And I, my only hope is that they consistently drop every six weeks. And if they miss one, then I'm going to crap on them for it on a full on video and like just straight up just go on rant mode um, because, you know, there is no excuse, especially when they were doing a little bit better with their with their updates, like season four, season five, I thought was pretty solid. And then then they say, all right, well, we're just ditching seasons entirely and, and we're, we're done with that. And. I get it if you're splitting your your entire dev team to work on your next Halo game, but at the same time, like you got to give us all these all these rumored things. Like the Falcon was play has been playable for like months now. Like you know, Halo leaks has been making videos of them literally looking at the Falcon, sitting in the Falcon, flying the Falcon, but we can't get the Falcon in Halo. Like how does that? make any sense like and so i don't know how broken it is in actual gameplay but based on the video i saw it looks fine like it doesn't look there's like an issue so maybe they're planning on dropping it like at the next updates or you know like there's no idea like they're not there's no it feels like there's no plan what what they have left they're just kind of saying yep we're going to give you uh you know, content update toward 30, content update 31 when things are ready. And Arash, like you said, it could just be like more updates to skins or, hey, there's a great bundle that's $40 if you want to go buy it. I mean, it's it's fantastic. It looks great. It's worth a whole DLC or a new game. But, <laughs> you know, go, go check it out. You know, like it's just it's like um, it's like frustrating because, yeah, you know, I'm going to be excited for the next Halo game to drop. But, you know, I, we don't know. It's going to either be. 2025 2026 i mean no, I, who knows no when shot. it's gonna be 
No the shot. reason why I, I my prediction was that it was going to drop 2025 was because the seasons that they were planning to drop were going to end by that time. Yeah. And I felt like I felt like the fact that certain infinity has been working on the game since 2022 and infinite and now three for three cut their dev team in half to help them finish the game. I'm like, all right, they've been working on this and it's only going to be multiplayer. I see them making the game like official, like after that four year stint, a four year, like 2025, 2026 would be like, I feel like the range in which this game drops, at least the multiplayer uh, story will probably be like, I'll be like 40 years old by the time the story <laughs> comes out. Wait, is that, but, is that the rumor that certain affinities working on the next game? I thought it was just, they were working the on The rumor was they were working on canceled. Tatanka. And it, then... it, got, it got changed. Yeah, it got changed to now be a game. Because they said Tatanka, like the mode itself is now been elevated to a game. Because they said they, they're confirmed working on the next experience for Halo. So you know, I'm like, all right, well... If it's not Tatanka, that means what I my my prediction is is that they're making like a reemergence of like an MCC type of thing, a collab, a, a conglomerate of because that they they put out a survey recently and they said, hey, w how much would you want to have old Halo content in a in like infinite like like aesthetic? And people like gave their opinions on it, and I'm like, why would they ask that question? Nah, Unless that, they were trying to plan, you know, I, I feel like for the Mountain Dew thing. <laughs> no, I think that it came out after it was a it was like a it was a survey that came out after that. I think all that is Marsman is they're just going to pump in like, here's your Halo CE playlist. Here's some Forge maps. Here's some Halo I, I 2 maps. That. Here's some Halo yeah. 3 maps again. I can see it. Here's some maybe your reach maps and then you just stop i yeah. guess i don't know I, or, 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 we, yeah. or we we take in the copy and, and it's halo 3 anniversary they've been working oh, on this no, I, see, see, I, i'm not gonna go that far but i my only my reason why i say that is because in the unreal engine it's a little bit i guess easier to manage because a lot more people have experience with the unreal engine at this point and and certain affinity as you know they've been working on this project rumored like since like i said like i said 20 22 or 2021 and they just have they officially said that yeah we are working on next experience within halo and and now that they officially three for three acknowledges that we are looking past infinite means that they're probably going full steam ahead trying to at least complete this game for you know and based on you know console generation stuff like 2025 2026 is that that next kind of you know rumored I guess you would say like digital console or next thing that's coming out. So you could, I could see them dropping like a multiplayer Halo game that's like similar to Infinite, but it's expanded with more devs working on it. So I don't know. I'm yeah. my prediction is 2025, but it w I probably 2026 if anything. I mean, yeah, it's. I mean, it's possible. I do think it's a little bit of a reach to say that you know they're actually they've been working on the next Halo game. Um, especially because I, mean, I think they're, they're I think they're they're, they're, they're making their own game. Right? They're making their own they're game. They're making their own game. Yeah, and they've said that. Well, they like, said they have, they have three projects. I think they said on for Center Fifty at least. They well, said, they said yeah, yeah, they said Halo that they would Halo. be a pretty big project. I mean, we saw how long it took three four three to do it um, with Infinite. So I, I don't know. I just don't think there's any real concrete evidence that they are working on the next game. But you know, if they are, then though. sure, we might get a Halo the next Halo game sooner. Um, if 343 is just working on the next Halo experience, I think if I had to predict, I'm saying we wouldn't get the next uh, mainline Halo game until maybe 2027 at the earliest. That's... Could be wrong, but that's that's what I'm thinking. You know, ever since Infinite came out, like a lot of people were just saying like, oh, 343, they just need to they just need to get working on the next game. And I think a lot of people say that not truly understanding how long it's actually going to take to get the next game. Like, I think it's going to be a hot minute. Yeah, I think yeah, I could agree. Usually uh, five years. I mean, like, we've, years we've seen from three, four, three, they couldn't, they couldn't handle infinite. Right. So there's, there's two, there's two things there. One, the studio is just a fucking shit show after launch and they couldn't, properly do a live service game or two they instantly pulled off and started working on the next game but here's the thing i don't think that happened because there's so many leaks that come out of 343 and not one has said they moved on to the next game obviously recently they like said they're looking forward to the future or whatever but that was like 
a month right. ago. I don't think anything has started, but probably until like maybe the last six months. I I think you're five, six years out before a three four three Halo game. And maybe certain affinity has been cooking this whole time. Maybe Tatanka actually turned into a game, but like I feel like we've also heard that that just straight got shelved. So like for all I know, certain affinity isn't making a Halo game. We haven't heard anything from them for like a year. So it's like. I really don't know when we'll see the next Halo experience. Will it be multiplayer? Will it be a campaign? Who knows? <laughs> I think I think yeah. it's going to be not like a rough time for Halo fans cuz you know, you could just go do other things with your life, but if you only play Halo, you are going to be very bored for the next 4 or 5 years because it's going to be infinite, but infinite on its deathbed. Like it's going to be infinite where 99% okay. of the updates are skins and forge maps. So if you like skins and forge maps, infinite's going to be your shit, dude. Because don't worry, every operation that you're getting every like three months or a month and a half, however often they drop them, it's just, it's just skins. The operations are skins. And maybe, maybe once a year we'll get one of those weapons that was fucking leaked at the flight. Maybe one of those will make its way into the game like once a year. <laughs> but n none of that's going to do much. Like, let's be honest, they have the Falcon in next month. I mean, yay, like, cool, like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't do it, but, like, how much is the Falcon really going to change Halo Infinite? Like, it's still going to be the same shit, right. just a different flying vehicle that, like, you can kind of work on with a team. I think the, the problem with Infinite is the only way you were ever doing anything with this game, like, in terms of, of a true revival, is adding a massive game mode that actually brings people back a la, you know, when Warzone was added to Call of Duty, or like somehow just relaunching the entire thing but like piecemeal updating maps like we talked about the map earlier it's fine it's a halo map a halo map in a halo game is not bringing people back like and i know everyone on twitter loves to spend their money on fucking skins but like the only <laughs> people they're selling those skins to at this point are like core halo players the people who st have stuck around and are playing regardless or like the people that hop on every time they sell them new skins to dress up their spartan and then get back off <laughs> for the next like month like i i don't know i think halo is is boring i, I honestly like i'm kind of at the point where it's like i don't even think halo is like really worth talking or thinking about for a while like until they announce the next project i don't even think it's worth speculating because you really have no clue what it's going to be when it's going to be like if it'll be any is it 343 are they gonna are they gonna make something poopy could it be halo 3 anniversary is certain affinity doing that who knows i also like i've been saying this for a while but i don't know why people have so much faith in certain affinity like don't get me wrong like max hoberman's like his interviews and his tweets like he seems to know his shit but certain affinity as a developer has a track record of doing support work for other studios and mid <laughs> like so i don't know why people right. think like they're gonna come in make a halo game and it's gonna be like the savior of halo like they made h2a multiplayer boys how, how good was that they made doom 2016 multiplayer how good was that like their their track record of making their own multiplayer games like granted i'm sure in those cases, especially H2A, like you're on a time constraint. So maybe, maybe they, if they have more time to cook, it'll be a lot better. But like, they've never showed me anything that shows like, this isn't some, I mean, they're seasoned. They've been around forever. They've worked on a bunch of Call of Duties. They've, they've worked on tons of different multiplayer FPS games and stuff. But have they ever really shipped anything of their own that was truly amazing? Like people, like you would need it to be to, to kind of bring Halo back. And I, I don't think they have. So, who, even if even if they are working on something, who knows if it's going to be any good? Like, might just be another average Halo game. So, I don't know. Yeah, I can't I can't wait till they announce the next Halo game, and then people are all like, "Oh, this is 343's last chance this time." You know, it just keeps the goalposts just keep moving. People said that about Halo Four, Halo Five, Infinite, and they'll say it again about whatever the next game is. I don't um, think they said that about Halo Four. That was their first game. <laughs> Well, people were saying that was Halo's last chance. Oh, yeah. Because right. since Reach was a yeah, setback. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I, I get you there. But, I feel um, like Halo 4, before it came out, most people were, like, fairly, like, yeah, maybe maybe Halo, maybe this is, like, you know, we got a new studio, like, maybe maybe they do it, maybe, maybe this does, like, turn it around, and then after Halo 4, every time, it's been like, now this is the last chance, and then we just... Because they, they came in with yeah. it, with Reach, made some good changes to they Reach. Did. They teased us a little bit, and then and then they gave us Halo Four. It's like what the fuck. But it was, to your it, point it, about um to to what you said about like these smaller updates not really 
doing anything for infinite's population it's not going to revive the game you know i also kind of feel like i feel the same way about the seasons the game was receiving uh I, I don't even feel like the content we were getting with that was really enough to revive the game and you know i think about since they're ending seasons for halo infinite it makes me think like you know halo in the past when halo was actually good it didn't need seasons to thrive um so it's like you said, maybe a big, uh, a new mode or something like that. Like the game, I mean, it's possible that they bring some cool new things to the game uh, with these smaller updates that actually do bring players back. I, you know, I just don't think the game needs seasons. I know it's a live service game, but I don't think Halo needs to be a live service game to be good. It didn't need to in the past, and I, I really don't think it would need to now if it was truly if the games were truly as good as halo games used to be i will say i don't think you could ship like unfortunately with everyone's like fortnite and call of duty and apex have like ruined people's expectations for games you can launch a good multiplayer game but if you don't constantly update it people will just play something else like you have to the whole reason that this the this like I mean, live cs services... could not receive a single update and, and people just still be playing it CS, it's just good I think CS is like the one anomaly, core. but even Valve updates it sometimes. No, I, like, I, I think Halo, Halo easily could have been that too. Maybe if they actually kept like a good game, like the reason it's CS like is that, done there it there wasn't is, all these other Counter Strikes after CS go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, CS if if you if Halo I mean? had actually kept different like, with COD and Halo. Yeah, the the. You know, it, it, I was gonna say the. I think the whole biggest thing is like Halo Five was the example of like how. You you have decent updates at a, a a good amount of time, but the problem was is that Halo Five was such a divisive game that it caused a lot of its fans to not want to play it because of the fact the campaign was so dog water. Like I feel like if that campaign was half of what they promised it was going to be, then I think Halo Five would have been a relative more of a success than what it ended up being. And and generally the multiplayer side actually was pretty successful in the long run and they actually did a decent job at at creating updates that were at least updates that granted you know multiplayer maps and i feel like that's what halo was always built off of you didn't, i don't think necessarily you needed a mode for halo in general maybe infinite because of the fact you started out so poorly you know but when it came to like halo 5 or even just classic halo 2 like you just just sell like those multiplayer map packs and then that was all you needed to just go back in and play some more and and i feel like because of infinite starting out so bad it we needed to see them show us that they can actually like give real content and unfortunately for three for three they waited a year to really do anything that was actually sizable like it took a year for us to get forge and then it took even longer to get actual maps that started to actually resemble like good gameplay. And I feel like that was what caused Infinite to start out so slow to the party in that by that time, you know, their population dwindled. Like, you know what I mean? So I think like that was kind of the problem. And then whether this Halo project is going to come out whenever it does, the expectations of it are going to be drastic. I mean, they're, they're, everyone's always having it from here on out. They're always going to be like, this has to be a complete game. I mean, multiplayer space right now, if any game drops without it, with without being broken, like it's automatically like a liked multiplayer game because half the time they're releasing with half content. Like Call of Duty, like, yeah, like I was hyped because I wanted to play Call of Duty, but then I get it. And I'm like, so this is just an updated version of Modern Warfare 2. Like that's all this is, but I'm paying seventy dollars for it. Like it, it, like I think Rash, you're right that, that that game would be so widely received as like an amazing game if it was like fifty bucks. Could you yeah. imagine that? People are like, holy fuck, this is like MW two, you know, like, and it's got a great update because it has a lot of quality of life improvements that a lot of people asked for. But just mm -hmm. because of the pricing alone, I hate the game. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and how about the multi? Like, I you know what? Why don't you just input? like the prestige system again like my, why does yeah. it feel like i played modern warfare 2 i unlocked all the guns already from the old game and all that stuff still carries with me like i would have had probably more respect for the game if they just said you know what you're starting from scratch unlock all this stuff grind for all the guns grind for all the attachments and i probably would have been playing it longer but the fact that i i already unlocked 90 percent of the content and i now just have to 
play for these new attachments. Like once you unlock the ability to have a scope on one gun, I unlocked every scope already. So yep. it's like, yeah. why, what's the point of me playing this again? Like, and ranked, you know, I like ranked is another thing for COD. It's just like, like people still don't understand how ranked works. Like it's, it's like, they have to put out an article to explain how, how it even functions. So it's just, it kind of like, it's, it's just, multiplayer games at this point i mean csgo obviously you it's in a, it's like its own world but a lot of multiplayer games at this point have been just so bare bones that it's like it's just like yeah anything that's not trash is like a, seen as an amazing feat you know what i mean like that's mm -hmm. it's just crazy i think you do see though like with multiplayer games that come out if they don't hit the ground running they die because like mm -hmm. Infinite came out, and, like, if we if we rewind, on launch, people said Infinite was fun. It had issues, but most people said it was, like, a decent game. And then they just, you know, it, it ended up with bugs. BTB was broken for two months. They did they had content very slowly, and it just, the, the player base just dwindled away. Well, you know what game came out in December, and it's on the same fucking track? The finals. Like, it dropped. It had 250k players. It's down to, like, 30k. So, like... Yeah, seen that. Seen you, that coming a mile away. When you release these live service multiplayer games, like people expect you to release it and just instantly start shitting out content. You can't have like these slow ramp ups, or people just leave and they don't come back. And it's just, I that's it. Just seems to be the trend, and it's like I, I it honestly sucks because it's like. But the, I think people expect that with the way because of the way games launch, like. Look at the finals. What what is it has the like finals? it has like it's two like game this, modes and and they're the same. Yeah, basically. it's the same thing every time. I think that's why people want that live service. But when you when you release a game as jam packed mm -hmm. as Halo Three, I don't think people it's have too. that same expectation. Like that is it's it's just too good. It's just too good, man. Like <laughs> nothing else. Well, it's or, it's also a completely different like generation now, right? Of gamers that are growing up in this live service era, okay. and in an, in another ten years, the concept of a game releasing fully anything like that's not even a that's not even a thought. They they're, they're going to be thinking back fondly about Fortnite and these other. Oh man, think of everything we could do in this game. Why doesn't this game do that? No. Like Fortnite or whatever. It's just like gamers are just. They're just Maybe. ready for a plate full of shit, and they're gonna eat it, and they're just they're gonna love it. They don't care. Give me microtransactions. Give me your weekly or monthly updates, and I'll go grab mom's credit card, and we'll see what we can buy this week without getting in trouble. It's just <laughs> like it's just so the ridiculous. Price is, the prices of games are going up to seventy. It's gonna be eighty dollars in like in two years, and then no. we're getting less and less content. It's just it's just yeah, unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. And people you know, just I accept mean, it. Well, yeah, people spend money on on garbage, and then we just get more like, garbage. You know, I half, mean, half the world is dumber and, than the average like, person. Though I think we're you experiencing could say that. it's just a bunch of kids that just you know they don't care. They just want the game. Just you know, I, I don't know well, shoot things and have it's, fun. It's, but it's, I, it's I remember when I was that. a kid, like I was careful what games I was buying. Like I, I you know, That's, I didn't just we. We had a good though. Like social media wasn't crazy. Yeah. Games were just complete things without all these microtransactions. And now these guys are like, that's all they know. Like those are the only kind of games they actually know. Like there's people being born that have never even heard of Halo Three, and that's God. That's depressing. You know, we, just we thinking just about do that. that makes... in Valorant, by the way, we'll ask people if you ever played Halo, and a rash like. I mean, what is it like 50% of the time they're like I've never even heard think, of that I think I think 50% of the time they I would say like maybe 20 30% of the time they like straight up don't know what you're talking about then there's like another 20 30% where they're like oh my dad played that <laughs> and then there's like the other person that's like oh I think I played Halo Reach <laughs> like nobody mentions that's, that's any of the depressing. recent games <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah. Yeah, and, right. and maybe yeah, eventually it's, like, it's all going to collapse on itself, and we're going to somehow revert back to like these golden days of multiplayer games. You know, game uh, there there is the lethal companies, there are the pal worlds. And it's well, yeah, but those are like, me. but those are like, I would say co op gaming is as good as it's ever been in terms of like a PVE experience. But when it comes to like PvP multiplayer shooter stuff like that, it's it's terrible right now. Like it's it's not good. Mm. I think the problem is. An indie developer or a smaller budget can make a cool single-player game. They can make a cool PVE game. 
and that's they can do it. But to make a truly like good PvP multiplayer game, I feel like you need a pretty massive budget. And that's why you don't really see too many indie multiplayer games that are like PvP blow up and stay massive. Like obviously Battlebit was did decent last year, but Battlebit fell off pretty quickly because it's like four dudes making a game like they they put out what they could and then like they can't even like update it and fix it. So uh, and props to them like it sold a ton of copies. I'm sure they did very well for themselves. But like to get a truly like complete or full PVP experience, you need you almost need a AAA developer. But like the AAA developers just seem to have no clue what the fuck they're doing. And it's like I don't know to whoever said it to you, to either Jared's point, like I, it does seem like the live service thing is just all coming. Like it, it's all imploding. Like suicide squad probably kills Rocksteady, Right. So like how many studios and, and live service games are we going to see like completely shut down before? Like we just give up on the premise. Like it, uh, but at, on the other hand, then you see there was a report recently that like 70 or 80% of EA's money last year came from live service. So it's like, when you hit a live service game and it does well, it, it like funds your entire company. But you see so many yep. companies that literally go under because they try and do the live service thing and it completely flops. Like Redfall obviously was horrible and it didn't really turn out to be a live service game, but it was developed as one and then shifted to like a shitty co-op game with... <laughs> I saw a tweet the other day where some guy is trying to say that it's that fucking stupid Xbox account and he, he tried to say Redfall's good now. It, it was a tweet was like going over the open world. It was a tweet of him <laughs> walking around for a minute, bro. That was there at launch. Nothing changed. It's the same shit game. There's no, there's nothing to fucking do. You didn't even see a vampire in the whole minute. You're in the fucking main city. Like, oh, but, and, the people, and, and even even if it was better now, it's like good. All five people that are still playing that game can enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know what it is it's like. Yeah, and you're right about the fact that live service is kind of hitting its its shit streak. I mean, even Sony said, "Hey, we were going to do 12 live service games," and they they even said, "Yep, no, we're, we're going to crack it down to eight because they're half the like half the projects are going to be you know not really as profitable as we can get." And I feel like live service games that only do well are the ones that have this devout fan base like Madden that will constantly just buy hey, into Madden the into ultimate Madden games and they still I know. buy it. That's, well, they, that's, that's the thing. They, these they're they're that's the no thing. They just keep buying its ultimate team. Yeah. And I, I'm sad because I'm excited for NCAA football to come out, and I already know it's going to be trash. Like, I, I, mean, yeah. I'm, I it's the first time it's they been out it's in a have decade. Team. I know. It, you already no, know. Like, they're not. just going to make a Madden and yeah. just paint over it with Wait, NCAA. What's the, of, what's the point of an ultimate team in a college so game? So they said like, it's going to have, of... like, uh, former college stars. Dude. Yeah, because they used to have oh, they, they started kind of Ultimate started Team. Yeah. They actually started Ultimate Team back in in NCAA 2014. That was actually the first time they they really started incorporating that in the college level. That's like Barry Sanders was like one of the top tier like college players you can get back then. And I, and I was like, hey, this is a really cool idea. Not knowing that this would be the ultimate end of of any football <laughs> game that I loved. I thought, uh, oh, this is a really like, yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, this is a great idea. I like this game mode. And then I like, it's like me, the future, future self, like, dude, do not <laughs> like that shit. It's going to, it's going to ruin. Curls. Yeah. It's going to ruin. It's going to ruin football games forever. Stop doing it. Don't, don't like it. So I was just <laughs> like, damn. Yeah. Can't no, believe it, that, that ended it. Yeah. It, that you can, it, the the state of like modern Madden is so sad because it's like you can tell all the resources go into Ultimate Team, but even at the same time, like all the Ultimate Team people seem to hate it, but they still just fucking play it in buy packs anyway. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> EA somehow like I feel like they just lucked in to the whole sports like all the sports games that they just milk all the money off of every year like and never innovate. Like, they, they they hit the jackpot with EA Sports back in like the the ps2 like original xbox era and they were just somehow able to add that one fucking thing with like all these ultimate team modes and they're just set for life like granted ea has other big things like you well you have battlefield but how's that doing today but like you have apex and i guess you have other games that respawn makes i don't even know what the fuck else ea does these days <laughs> yeah I, I think of like what bioware but bioware they haven't, they haven't done anything since knows, yeah. since the east since the last mass effect and nearly destroyed their entire publisher um you know like i was just 
I feel like Madden, even if Madden went full live service and said, hey, you know what? You're going to just pay for like half the price for an update every year for these rosters. I think that'd be way better than what they're doing. $70 price tag, pretending that this is a new game when you're not doing anything. It's like you're constantly just selling crap and then people still buy it. Like I haven't bought a Madden game in like eight years, I think. And and I'm, I think I'm happier for it. Like I'm, I'm a happier person because I don't have to look at my bank account and say, I, I bought a Madden game. Like I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm fine. I'm we, happy. Uh, this recent Madden we tried. We didn't buy it. We played like the the Xbox Pass preview because we tried to do mm-hmm. like one of the the ultimate team or not ultimate like one of the online franchises, but we just gave up and I, no one bought it. So that was bad. Yeah. But all right. Well, why don't we move on? We can talk about like maybe the last big topic here, maybe, and that's the the state of play. So. I, I don't know if you guys all watched it today, but I mean, let me know what what would you see there. What excites you? What um what what thoughts did you have? The on return the of today? tactical espionage. There's about I mean, when's the last time a fucking stealth game has come out and like a triple A one at that? Was Deathloop stealth? Uh, I mean, kind of. I I those first person like Dishonored type games like barely. Okay. But I'm talking like an actual Metal like Gear Splinter style. Cell, Metal Gear. Yeah, the, the 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 classic, and even like the old Assassin's Creed games. I feel like that espionage, like you yeah. know, I wouldn't when when he announced that, I was I was happy to hear it. But I also lo- was looking at it like, oh, it will be like a movie, and I'm like, oh no, man, don't <laughs> don't say that, don't add that well, extra it, part. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Four. It was like a fucking movie. I've never played the game, but I watched the cutscenes oh, twice. Dude. Long that ass cutscenes. I, I love Metal Gear Solid. That game love has long ass cutscenes. I think it has the record for the longest cutscene in a in a video game. It's um, forty minutes it's like long. Cutscene. I I love it. No, I think I, it's longer yeah. than that. I think it's like close. I think we're talking I, like. An I beat Metal Gear Solid that. Five. Love um, the game. Loved it. Dude, it's just, yeah. No, I love, I love cutscenes. Right? I, pe- yeah. I don't get why people complain no. about cutscenes if you could just skip them. You know what I mean? Like, I love yeah. long cutscenes. If, if you skipped the fucking Metal Gear Solid 4 cutscenes and, like, it just opened up on the next scene, you'd be like a different <laughs> continent. Be like, what yeah. I know, fuck? but yeah, but you <laughs> skipped it. I mean, that's when you skipped it. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just you know something happened. Just play the mission. I mean, if you want to know what happened, you watch the cutscene. You know, it's not even that he said. I'm okay. I love cutscenes and storytelling, but it's more like when he said this is going to be an interactive movie experience. That's where I'm kind of like, but it's a video game. Like I said, like like, blend the two. Yeah, like at least like let's don't like he gets me nervous because even when he had the the Xbox showcase and he showed off the his new horror game, he's like, Yeah, this is gonna be something new that no one's ever seen before. And he said the same thing about Death Stranding. And Death Stranding was me delivering boxes like I work for UPS. And I'd rather not do that. I ra- I'd rather not do that. So like I well, love this Kojima is action game, espionage. Yeah. This is what he does, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. This is metal gear. Yeah. Um so you know a metal gear genre which which he has done very well not it's not yeah. a death stranding it's not a whatever his horror game is the trailer was awful i mean it, but, there yeah. was yeah. nothing to it it is like i didn't know what the fuck i was watching but the death stranding mm-hmm. I, I didn't play the first one but my my concept of like the footage I, I saw and like everything that i i heard was you just walk boxes around but i i saw the state of play for death stranding too there's like a guy attacking people with a guitar like did did I miss something? Was there a part of Death Stranding one that I never well, saw? Well, I mean, so, I, don't, I mean, no. That's how these trailers are for the game. They're weird as shit. Yeah. And then I think the gameplay is just it, you. Though. I'm going to be honest. Delivering boxes the whole time. <laughs> like, <laughs> baby. I, 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 I played the, I played the, the first one. I'm going to love Death Stranding. Yeah. I think yeah, you like build like bridges and shit in that game. Yeah, and in the yeah. in the Death Stranding two trailer, they were talking about like making connections. Like I think that's that same thing you did in Death Stranding one. Um, yeah, so yeah, um, I, I play. I played the first game. Um, I was hyped for it. I'm a big fan of Kojima, and you know, hey, you know, Norman Reedus, he's a pretty good actor. Jumped into the game is really you are just delivering packages. You're building connections by delivering things to people, making like the whole point of the first game is trying to develop connections over the United States again, so that they can have a government. And in now you're in Mexico. I think I'm guessing you're gonna deliver boxes again, develop connections again in Mexico this time. Um, now, yeah. And so, and so the only issue <laughs> with the game 
is that it, it's they try to they, the storytelling is acting like you've known the story for ten years, and they talk about people that you've never met before, and like you're supposed to know who they are, but they never reference them like once. So like that entire trailer, he's just like Lewis, yeah, the, Lewis, and you're like, I don't know who Lewis is. Can you like give me in and, and the game when the game comes out? I have a I just have a strong bet that they're never gonna actually say who Lewis is. You're just gonna like have to assume <laughs> Lewis is somebody that is important, and no one. We're never gonna jump into who this guy is. Like we yeah, just have to accept that work. fact. And, and that's like, unfortunately, like I was hyped for the first game. After playing it, I was like, I don't even know what's going on because they never explained like half the story. And and I, I had to like watch a lot of the cutscenes to try to understand it. But like even then, I'm like, man. It was such a missed opportunity because there was a lot of hype behind that game and it, it kind of flopped hard like because of what the gameplay was. And I remember everyone reviewing it. it was like, oh, you're either going to adore this game or you're yeah. going to absolutely hate this game. And I was like, I don't like the sound of that. Like, that's not a, it's, it's, another, it's another post-ad game. It's the people that enjoy I'm that game are Star Citizen. Maybe Jared, maybe you are a Star Citizen enjoy and you don't know it yet. I'm ready to be a male man. I just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> they, I don't know if they showed it off at the next thing because I didn't watch it. But if I went to the PlayStation YouTube channel and they had a trailer for a um, taxi simulator game that looked like absolute dog shit. That was not in the state uh, of play. <laughs> unlucky. No. They released it like an hour before, so that's a that's that's pure post ad right there. I, I was happy they announced that Silent Hill 2 is actually officially being in development um, because they I remember the rumors for that were like for for four years. They were like, hey, Silent, 2, uh, Silent Hill 2 remakes coming. And now they finally actually announced that it will be arriving, but not knowing when. But okay. at least they at least said it confirmed. I, thought, I mean, I I'm happy. I thought we knew was working on that. Was that a rumor? Yeah, we knew, we, yeah, we knew they were. No, yeah, it was, they, it was they announced like, yeah. that at some point. Uh, but... Man, I'm nervous about this game. I'm so like I love the Silent Hill series. Like you can't see it. I have all the games behind me buried away <laughs> somewhere. But I just man, Silent Hill 2 is such a special game just in gaming in general. And their last game that Bloober did, uh, I think it was their last game, The Medium, was obviously met with mixed reception. I actually liked that game. I thought I did some interesting things, even though the ending was a little controversial with the whole, like, I don't know, suicide stuff. But uh, I just it's feel like, like when this oh, game... Shit. But, when... oh, yeah, there you go. There's the connection. But the damn <laughs> multiverses. But anyways, uh, when when this game comes out, I just feel like so many people are just going to compare it to Resident Evil 4. I mean, and it looks I'm a like, lot like it, let's be honest. It, it does, because the main character reminds you of Leon. I mean, the jacket, the hairstyle, it's like it's like Is knockoff combat, version Leon in a sense. The combat looked exactly like Ari. It's that like third person did, over, which, over the shoulder, yeah. slow aiming which, which, shit, and which, shoot fucking yeah, monsters. Which, which is fine, but I wonder what they're going to do to try to make it a little more unique for the Silent Hill side of things, because Resident Evil 4, as far as I'm concerned like perfected third person survival horror gameplay in that remake like it's it feels really good to play as leon in the fight monsters so i'm just i i hope they can do something good because like the melee combat in the trailer looked a little sus like it didn't look bad but it didn't it's just you know the same animations over and over again with the melee weapons yeah and, uh, i don't know I also felt like it was way early in development because they, they didn't even give like a, a, a sense of when this thing's coming out. And you can they, tell they by the way it was moving. 2024 is and when it it's was, coming out. They said it was in. Yeah, they said it was like a development. And I was just like, I feel like they're going to end up delaying this thing because I looked at it and I was like, the, and I agree with you. The, the uh, movies were a little like clunky to me. And I felt like, you know, at least a game that's being remade is going to get like a little bit of a more of a of a refresh. Like it, it just felt like. They need to do something, like you said, like how Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil 4 remake did kind of make those adaptions to kind of please the the longtime fans that were annoyed about some of those smaller mechanics. And I played it; it was a lot of fun. Like, and and I I used to play, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of the older. Like, I played Resident Evil 5. Like when I was younger, it came out, and I was like, it was not as good as 4, clearly, but it was just I enjoyed those games back in the day. So give give something updated to that it's going to be like a great game but even the rise of ronin looked pretty good to me um yeah, i always like samurai stuff uh, 
Yeah, I like Samurai games. I was Dude. a big fan of Ghost of Tsushima, so it kind of reminds me of a little bit of that, but um, a little bit more traversal ability, but I think mm-hmm. it, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I'm worried about how that game's going to do. It's gonna it releases compared. the same day as Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh. <laughs> There's going to be so many Ghost of Tsushima like, uh, comparisons to the, that game. It's It's got an uphill battle, especially with how well Ghost of Tsushima was uh, mm-hmm. received. Yeah, it, it looked identical. I, I mean, I hope it does well because I, I do, yeah. do like samurai games, but I was just like, I, I want, I want to see Ghost of Tsushima too. Like, that's really what I'm gonna, what yeah, I want to see. What is Sucker Punch doing? I feel like it's been, it's been a while now. Hasn't been like three years, four years. Something like, like that. Around, around now is when we should be getting an announcement. Maybe they're saving it for the big PlayStation Direct. Yeah, I think something. I mean, I, I they, I think they did a, like almost perfection of what a samurai game would be like. You know. So I feel mm-hmm. like I think they're going to let Rise of Ronin have its day before they announce anything, because I feel like having those two games being as close similarly like gameplay as they are. I feel like you got to give them a little bit of breathing room because Ghost of Tsushima, I think, would win that fight <laughs> any day. Yeah. Um, so during the, the state of play, they showed good old foam stars again, and that game just dies like next week when it releases, right? It looks so oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Well, gonna it's, I game. mean, but Platoon is it's, a good it's game. releasing on PS Plus. I mean, oh shit, that means like <laughs> people will play it for free and then stop playing. Do you know you you yeah. say that? But Rocket League launched like that, and uh, you know that game's kind of doing okay. well, not anymore, but it did okay. Yeah, but Rocket League is good. Yeah, but Splatoon is good. This, has this, a is, this is baby's ripoff of Splatoon. Hey, I think this it... probably pulls a Power World and it hits 5 million concurrent <laughs> players and everyone loves it. Alright. Alright. Isn't that only I, on I, PlayStation? I, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah enough it, PlayStation players. The, the only thing is, is I heard that this, you know how everyone was ragging on Power World for like the, you know, using of assets? Because they did, but apparently this game actually they're does. using... Yeah. yeah, they're actually confirmed that they're using like AI built into like most of the game. And I feel like people that say, you know, look at AI, they're like, well, I'm not going to play this game out of protest because of AI. And I think because that was official, like they're not going to want to play this game. Like that's. I, yeah. I will say those people are like, a, they're loud. I don't think yeah. it actually affects games. I think Foam yeah. Star flops because it's Foam Stars. I don't think it's because they used AI art. Like. I, I no the the AI art shit. I mean, like the people that hate on that is just so stupid. Uh, and you know, I actually think like the the plagiarism accusations, like with mm-hmm. Power World, saying they used assets from Pokemon. I actually like you were pointing out like the hypocrisy with that and the inconsistencies, eh, Rash. But like I think that those complaints uh, are basically just like an extension of the hate for AI art because they were accusing the game of using AI art, which I don't think there's any concrete evidence of. And I think that's why they were f- kind of like leaning into like the plagiarism stuff too, just because they don't like AI art. But yep. no, nah, like when it comes to AI art, like if it's good, it's good. It's bad. If it's bad, it's bad. Some people just hate on it just because it's AI. The, the only like, people the bitching about it thing. are are furry content creators that are you're gonna get hit by it. But as someone who's an actual graphic designer with a real job that gets real paychecks and all that bullshit, I I use AI art as a tool, and I believe everyone should. The, these people that are like, oh, I don't want to use AI art, or you know, it's it's the there has been AI in Photoshop for a while, but obviously these people don't know about it. But the generative the, AI in Photoshop is so clutch. I use it like every time I make a thumbnail. Yeah. Every time. yeah, I use it. I I use it constantly when I'm making ads. Yeah. It's just you know, it's a tool. The the farmer. Could you imagine if a farmer was like, oh fuck, I got to use this hoe on this entire field. And then some dude's coming around with a tractor, and he's like, "That's cheating." You know, machines <laughs> made right, that tractor. Right. right. <laughs> Just use it. Who gives a fuck at this point? The, yeah, I mean, traditional out. traditional artists might say, you know, digital art is cheating. Yeah, like, you yeah, know exactly. what I mean? Like, it's just an evolution of technology, and like you said, yeah. it is a phenomenal tool, and mm-hmm. you can use it in you know all kinds of you different ways. Use it with your skill. Like I've been absolutely lately. I've been actually hand drawing Arash's thumbnails. And using AI art and mm-hmm. just using other tools like for you can you can trace certain things and get reference photos. Like I've just been asking for reference mm-hmm. reference photos. You yeah. don't have to go 
balls to the wall. Make your job easy. It's because at the end of the day, the whole good thing about art is the end product. It's like one of the only things where like a game actually has to be like coded well and not just look good, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but for art, flip your shit, make it, you know, trick people. Who, who cares if it comes out good, it comes out good and use AI. Right. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. The furry artist on Twitter. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Hate you guys bitching about that shit constantly. Yeah, no, no. Actually, this is funny because one of the people were complaining about Power World using AI, and then you go to their Etsy page, and they have all these like Pokemon plushies and stuff they made, not licensed by Nintendo, just dude, selling away because that's. Dude, yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna call any specific people, but the amount of people that I saw bitching about like Power World using AI that sell like fucking Spartan renders and shit, like, bro. <laughs> You're you're just selling renders of a fucking IP that you have no ownership of. How is that any different? Like, oh my god, they copied exactly. Pokemon and they they sold it. And it's like you actually just ripped the file out of the game and rejigged it in Blender, and you sold it to someone. Like that's worse. You actually took the model. At least Power World fucking you know changed it a little bit. They they changed the homework yeah. a little bit. Exactly. But, I, I I like and I to be clear like I don't care that like it, people do fan art sell it I don't care but it's uh, it's like sometimes it's like hypocritical and annoying but mm-hmm. um do you guys see anything else in the uh state of play that you care about I mean Helldivers two I comes mean, out like next week or whatever two oh, weeks yeah, from now Helldivers two looks awesome like I, I'm I'm ready oh, for yeah, it. I'm, I'm ready for a little star star trooper in my life. Dude, that game, the first one, uh, kind of ass single player, but it like elevated to a whole different game doing a co-op. So I think we all have to play that. I'll play it. Um, hmm. they also showed some more shit for Judas, which looks pretty cool. I don't know what the fuck the game's gonna end up being, but it looks like it. Bioshock it looks like what shit. Bioshock Infinite was supposed to be. Like yeah. I don't know. It looks Is interesting. That, that game dude, that did look interesting. Inspired by it. What did you say, BK? Is it made by the same guys that made um, Bioshock, or is uh, it just inspired? The main, by? the main dude is the head of this studio. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know how many people followed him, but yeah, it's like the main dude who led Bioshock is now making Judas. That's cool. But I hope they sneak in a Bioshock Two multiplayer experience, <laughs> dude. All right, so obviously I'm ready for more. I of feel that. like I've been a broken record about how I miss stuff like that, but someone on Twitter the other day actually made a really good point, and I think like dedicated servers have killed that style of like throw in multiplayer because everyone now expects when you have a multiplayer game that it has dedicated servers and it has live service updates and like those things are expensive so when we used to have like peer-to-peer or like local multiplayer you could just throw that shit in and like especially like on the 360 like the the xbox architecture did all the peer-to-peer shit for you like you just had to can have the mode there right and so like if a bunch of people didn't play your thrown together tdm mode it didn't really matter but like now you have to make like dedicated servers and people expect content updates and like i think it's just it's like completely killed our, our chances of getting any of those fun thrown in multiplayers because i mean that's what naughty dog said in their in their release statement about why factions got canceled they basically said like yeah we could make this game but it would engulf our studio or we could just make what we do and we're gonna do mm-hmm. that which what they do is remaster the last of us every like two years so <laughs> yeah, that's, they're, yeah, they're yeah, on we're point. gonna get a collection yeah we're gonna get a we're gonna get a collection last of us collection next we're not gonna get a new ip <laughs> just a collection yeah but, oh, yeah like jo- jokes aside like it it makes sense like what i yeah I think I mean, for, just, but doesn't that just go back to like them not having the budget to do that? Isn't it just a matter of that? Well, the the problem is that these single player these games in general have gotten so fucking expensive, right? So like, yeah, if you tone down the scope of a game, then you could. And I think that's been one of the biggest problems with like modern gaming is there's been such an arms race to make everything like 4K and like it's got to be sick, and you have to have these assets that take or these textures that take up 200 gigs on my hard drive. Like, I don't think we need that shit. Like. I think you could. Well, I don't say- think we need that either. I don't think games need to be as expensive as they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, games have got so much, so much more expensive, but they're also so shit. So, I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, what are we I mean, look, yeah, look at games like Hi Fi Rush. That like that game was really successful when it came to like critic scores. And granted, I know it was a really a Game Pass shadow launch, and 
but it actually did very well for itself for being just a game that was like cartoonish and just a st- narrative that was st- linear. Like that's all it was, and it was unique for what it what it did. But you know, going just just sticking to a narrative game that just sticks true to what its art style is, it doesn't need to have live service to be successful. Like you, you, like like these game budgets don't have to be massive in scale to to have a good game. Like granted, yeah, we're excited for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but you know, at the same time, like could you have lowered the scale of the scope of that game and just made the entire Final Fantasy game in one disc? Like, because they, they're splitting the entire story of Final Fantasy VII to three separate games. Like, we're not getting the full story. We're, we have to now wait for part three to come out at a later date, years down the line. You know, like, that's... Mm-hmm. It's like that's a downside, but like, yeah, could you lower that scope and still have a really good game? Yeah, of course you could. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I think I think uh, arg- like argue- a producer issue. Oh, sorry, what? What? I think What's it's that? a producer issue with most of this shit. I I feel like I don't know. I feel like a broken record with the. I feel like a lot of the producers. It just feels like a producer is behind the screens uh, scenes, being like, "Yeah, you guys, you guys have to make it live service, and we'll give you eight million dollars each to to make this, and you can do it over seven years." And they're like, "Oh, fuck it, I guess so." <laughs> it, it doesn't. The game industry changed so rapidly once the money got big, and I don't think that's just a coincidence. Yeah, I mean, everyone wants their game to be the next like fucking money bag, right? So you yeah. you try and expand the scope and expand the scope and expand the scope so that it hits all these different points so that everyone wants to play it and everyone wants to buy it but then you just spend a fuck ton of money and then you see things like mm. spider-man 2 which like i th- made a profit but like they spent so much fucking money making that game it's oh like my God. Yeah, dude, if, that, if that flops insomniac yeah, just great. dies right if that doesn't sell like a boatload of fucking copies and it's spider-man and it was a sequel to a good game like it it shouldn't ever flop but like Games have gotten so expensive that if you miss on one of these AAA games, like it's done. Like how much? Like I'm sure we'll hear, we'll see articles how much Rocksteady spent on Suicide Squad, right? And who who knows if they get that back? So, like, yeah, I don't know. The games have mm-hmm. just gotten so massive, and it's I I think a lot of it is shit that like people care in passing. It's not like core gameplay. It's like animations. It's, it's voice acting that has gotten way better in the modern age. It's, it's yeah. graphics. It's, well, it's not really frame rates, but it's textures <laughs> and it's, it's stuff like that, that yes, matters. But I don't think, I don't think like the, the trade off, like if you give me a game from the late 360 that looked like a 360 game and you just up the frame rate and you just gave me like some cool gameplay with it, I, I think that's plenty fine where where instead like we've now ballooned the budget 20x to make a modern AAA game and it's like I feel like back then I I don't think many of us love the game but Halo 4 looks like a fine fucking game like the mm-hmm. the graphics of late tr- the late 360 like were perfectly fine in my opinion and if if instead we had like progressed gaming in a way that was gameplay focused and like stuff like that whereas instead I feel like so much is I mean look at like modern COD and how insane some of the animations are for those guns and don't get me wrong oh, they're yeah. cool but like are gun animations really selling a Call of Duty game? No, I don't think so. I think oh, people, yeah, they, no, they're not. Like, I, I think people I, I, buy I, Call of Duty to shoot people and level up their fucking gun. Like, as long as you have a workable animation. I mean, look at Counter Strike. The fucking animations yeah. in that game are still from like, <laughs> they might as well there, be from 1999. Crazy how well Counter those Strike animations do on on YouTube? Have you seen how many views those? Well, yeah, those I mean, that's get? yes. I they're cool to look at, but like. If you give me two FPS games and one of them has the sickest animations in the world and one of them is just a better mm-hmm. game, I'm playing the better game every single time. I'm not playing a game because my guy reloads like in, in the most realistic way possible. And when he shoots the barrel, it looks like it. Like I'm mm-hmm. not playing. A, most of these games aren't Milsim games like and even the, it, which it, it may be hey. down that route. It gets a little more important, but those games are usually niche anyways. So. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, it, it's a little embarrassing. I, I fired uh, some guns today, and the amount of videos on YouTube that just assume that you know every single switch on a gun is crazy. So I booted up COD last night and just looked at the inspect animations, and it helped. It helped tremendously. <laughs> I, I was able to learn a gun based off of how well the animations were in MW3. Well, you know, I, <laughs> I guess it's working then. COD is training <laughs> us to use assault rifles. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> why they got sued. <laughs> 
You know what it is, though? I feel like not a lot of times nowadays the game developers are trying to make their games look amazing rather than focus on, like, the the actual, like, frame rates themselves. And, and, and that's why they, like, they keep pushing for that 4K resolution, but they have to stick to 30 FPS, right? And and I feel like when they hit, hit all these trailers, if a game doesn't look good, then you get outrage. Like, I remember Halo Infinite. I know Halo Infinite when they had that trailer that, <laughs> yeah. that basically the, the Craig trailer, right? It looked like a three it looked like an xbox one game and everyone was like yo what is this crap like you've been working on this game for a while why does it not look better the the fidelity is not as good and and they they because of that outrage for the how the game looked they spent a year on delay right and they needed to but the idea is that i agree with you a game doesn't have to look good to be a good game and, and i feel like if they lowered the budgets and just focus on the actual game itself then i'd be happy but at the same time those devs are like they put out something and people are like, yo, this looks like trash. And you're like, and then they, yeah. they feel the pressure. Well, so they have the, to then ramp it up. I mean, the case with Infinite wasn't just that it looked bad. It was that it looked worse than decade old Halo games. Yeah. I think it was more of that. Um, I would have saw rifle, to play. the environment, the, the, the brutes. There was so much there that just looked horrible compared to older Halo games. I mean, I think if it Battle looked on par with like Halo 3, which still looks great today, yeah. I think it would have been a different story. I feel like Battlebit and Lethal what, Company Jared? are showing that, that you can do well. I can't talk about Halo 3. <laughs> I just, it makes me so happy. It makes me happy, all right? <laughs> he, he I mean Halo, Halo 3 anniversary because you will be the happiest <sighs> man on the planet. Oh, Actually, we all, we all we all will be happy. We will be about back that. to a Halo podcast with Halo 3. Oh, fuck me. Oh, just re-release re 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 Halo 3. It. Play it safe. The BXR podcast might actually be about BXRing again, man. Shit, dude. We're <laughs> back. We're back. Yeah, they make Halo 3 anniversary and bring in Halo 2 combos yes, on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Just for us. For the free press that we always give them weekly. <laughs> um, Did you guys see the... Uh, I don't know if it's really news, but like apparently the Prince of Persia game only sold like 300k copies. Uh, I don't know. What'd I you mean, guys what else did they expect? What, it came out? <laughs> <laughs> and there you go and that's how it sold 300k wait, copies wait it came it did it really yeah it dropped like a few weeks ago did it actually it? what's up i thought you were excited about it i was and then power world came out i mean yeah it, it's, it's actually, actually not a bad game. problem it's actually not a bad game no it, no it's a great game do you, yeah. do you think power world's the reason it it did no, slightly I, worse than i think expected? the reason it did slightly worse is because it's a 50 dollar game that isn't on Steam, and it's a 2D platformer Metro, Metroidvania game made by Ubisoft, who pisses people off every week. Like, yeah. it had everything stacked against it. It wasn't on a good platform. You know, I'm not actually, buying that shit on Ubisoft Connect. Fuck that. I think that. Ubisoft might actually have killed themselves with the, the amount of shit well, games actually, they released. And, and now that you say that, too, though, there was, like, people oddly just hated that game, too. Like, from when they first saw the trailer, they're like, oh, this is shit. It's a 2D you know, Prince of Persia game or whatever. And like, even watching some streamers play it, everyone in the chat just kept going, oh, this game's so shit, isn't it? Say it's shit. Please say it's a bad game. So, and they're like, no, it's a great game. I think here, here's the biggest problem with Prince of Persia. You can't sell me a, two, a 2D Metroidvania for $50. I'm sorry. I'm not going to pay for that. Like, I don't care that it's like 20 hours long or whatever. Like, if I look at a game and it's 2D, I'm paying $30 max. It could be the best game in the world. Like, I, we, it's just it, like the qual. like if I could buy a billion 2D platformers on Steam for $5, why would I spend $50 on this one? Like, uh, what about a, they're a, a dime game like a dozen. Super Mario Wonder? Yeah, I was going right. to say Nintendo, Super Mario Wonder. Nintendo is, like, yeah, is in a different like... universe and Nintendo can do whatever the fuck they want. They're not Ubisoft, all right? <laughs> Ubisoft, the company that, that has made so many pieces of shit that people are like, like, I, I feel like Ubisoft would have to, they have to hit on like three or four games in a row to even get their reputation back. Cause like from Skull from and my, Bones, fuck it, L, dude. I can't wait. I, Everyone says so it's excited. good, man. I, I'm excited. I, have they said that? I, the people, yeah, I've, I've been seeing a lot of positivities right. about it. I, I, people Somehow. are saying that it's the similar feeling you get with Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I'm uneasy about it because they haven't had a good, any sort of pirate game come out. Yeah. I mean, CFDs was like, Okay, but the problem is they didn't have a lot of content for a long period of time, and I was just like, mm -hmm. I, I can't. You need to have a crew to play with that game. So yeah. I feel like you haven't had a good pirate game yet, really. So other than Black Flag, I mean, after that, I really don't know one. 
a good yeah. genre. What's up? It's a good genre. I feel like uh, I feel like it's not shit out enough. We need more Fortnite esque uh, shitting out live service games of pirates. <laughs> yeah, maybe Ubisoft is onto something. I mean, they didn't shit this one out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That's they fun. fucking took their time on this baby, but I ho- hopefully it's decent. But yeah, I don't. I, don't I know, mean, it man. probably won't be. Yeah, I mean, I it'll probably be like average at best. But like, what Ubisoft is a publisher. Like, I just don't understand what the fuck they're doing. Like, there's the Avatar game, which I did it do well. I don't even know. Like, I I feel like it never even had a media cycle. It just I came out. That, that came out. Yeah. yeah, like it just came out. Maybe it sold well. I don't. I don't know. No one talked about it. And then, you know, the Prince of Persia game. I mean, basically did the same thing. Like no one really has talked about it. Which it's a two D platformer. But like X Defiant, is that does that game even exist? Is it ever going? They <laughs> they announced they're doing another play test. What are you fucking play testing? Like <laughs> fucking release the game. Get it out. Like do something. <laughs> How about, how about when they did the last play test? It was actually pretty fun, and then yeah. they just Sorry, said it again. didn't pass a single Xbox quality control <laughs> test. And I was like, I was like, I played it on on my Xbox and played it, and it was okay. Like, but what happened to this game? Like, what's going on? I don't. X Defiant is a it's a weird it's a weird beast. But like, what else is even? What else is you? They have the Star Wars game that's supposed to come out this year, right? Outlaws or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, I'm sure that'll sell decently because it has Star Wars attached to it. But like, I don't know. Will it? Will it really do a whole lot to move the needle? I mean, I I dare not speak of Star Wars because the last time I did, Twitter was not a, or TikTok was not happy. <laughs> but, That's true. You got. But you got I don't. Lost. I don't. But, you know, fucking people. I don't think this Star Wars game is going to do well. Sorry, sorry, Star Wars fans. Actually, no, they hate Star Wars, and they also love it simultaneously. They're like Spider-Man fans. <laughs> I'm glad people have started shitting on Spider-Man too. By the way, that have game they? was bad when it came out. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, it was I, it was half baked, and I felt like I was the only one saying it. Like when it came out, I was like, oh, this kind of didn't meet a single expectation, and kind of just rushed every single storyline. And I can't wait know. to play it and so find I, out. It, it when you play it, there's a there's a pretty funny phenomenon because they're trying so hard to make Miles Morales like how he is in the movies and his culture and all that. But I think it's written by only white people that like wear Target graphic t-shirts every day. Um and it becomes <laughs> insanely cringe because of it. Good. Yeah, so well, yeah, sure. to it. <laughs> I should I should probably play the first one or just one of them. Play a modern sp- Spider-Man game for like for like two hours and then play, play it. Miles play the Miles Morales one that's on PC because its gameplay is better than the first one and I don't think you give a fuck about the story anymore. Anyway. I do not no. Yeah, its story <laughs> was much worse than the first one, but gameplay wise it was better. Uh, all right, well, fair enough. All right, well I think I think really? that was most of our our big our big hitter <laughs> topics. We kind of wrap it up unless anyone had anything else they want to bring out. I mean, I don't have too much to say on it, but the Call of Duty skill-based matchmaking oh, thing Jesus was kind Christ. of kind of some news, you know, mm-hmm. where they can pretty much confirm that they do factor in skill. So, you know what we should do though, when we're playing it and getting our process. ass kicked, quit. Uh, they said that that was their determiner of right. a low skill player. So, if I'm getting railed now, I think all three of us just leave them there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, not, they did uh, work. They, they you work. know, they they did mention something about. I believe, like, you know, they tested matchmaking without factoring in skill, and when they saw when bad players were getting destroyed, they quit out of games, and there was less of that when they factored in skill. And, I mean, like, that makes sense. I get that. But it's like, yeah. it doesn't mean people are, I mean, like, I get why they're doing that. They want people in the game. They want people playing, spending money. I mean, but that doesn't mean everyone's going to be okay with that. People still don't like playing sweaty matches every single match. Like, that's still a problem. So... Um, yeah, it might make sense for them to do that. I mean, there's a lot of things that could make sense for them to do. Like, you know, they could have ridiculous prices for items in the store. It doesn't mean everyone's going to be happy with it, even if it makes sense for the company to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Um, and, and, you know, and like, yeah, maybe there's less people quitting when they use skill-based matchmaking. Mm-hmm. But like, are they factoring in how many people make Smurf accounts? Oh, and God, just destroy yeah. like new uh, new players on their Smurf accounts. Like, are they factoring in that as well? Like, I don't know. 
Well, I think in COD that's less Smurf accounts and more people like reverse boosting. Because like or that how many people are really just spending you know $60? good players getting down yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. you know just you I mean, know, that's why people manipulating VPN, right? the system. Yeah. No. All I have to do is VPN and I could be having fun. I know, supposedly it doesn't work as well in MW3, but like that was the big oh. thing in the original Warzone was like all the resurgent streamers VPN because it puts you in like bot lobbies for some reason. Yeah, and, and I think you know less people would probably be manipulating the system to get easier matches if skill based matchmaking wasn't a thing or if it was less strict like it was back in the day. So they can act like it's a good thing for the game, but I, I still don't see it. Mm hmm. Yeah, they say that it's all about retention. Like, hey, you know, you want to play that extra game because you got clapped or it was a really close game. You want to play another one. But I never once felt like I want to play more COD than maybe a few matches and then just get the hell off. Because <laughs> I feel like at least back when I played COD, you know, back in the old original Mount Warfare 2 or others, I had something to grind for, like prestiging, and then I would just play the game to have fun play a few hours and then like on social and then get off and then play again tomorrow like that social experience whether you got you you know just played a social experience just have fun i feel like you lost that with call of duty now it's just all how how much of a like of a towel do you need for the night do you need a big one like a beach towel or do you need like a towel <laughs> like what what level are we going with tonight and i feel like i can either have a grand time being put in lobbies that are like more social or more likely getting put into lobbies that i'm i'm playing against like 8 year olds that that are snorting <laughs> cheeto dust like i don't know which one i'm playing tonight so i don't know i i i really wish cod needs to get their shit together yep yeah. And that's well, what's annoying. Like the idea that like there's this system that is responsible for you being placed into all these sweaty matches. Like if it just happened naturally, like there was no skill based matchmaking and some matches are sweaty, some mm -hmm. matches are easy, and, and there was a mix of both, like that'd be fine. But when you think there's a system in place that's actually making all your matches like competitive competitive like that, like that's that's the problem. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why I should? Why am I not just playing ranked at that point? And it's Call of Duty. Call of Duty's always been such a casual game, just grinding for skins and challenges yeah. and stuff like that. And it's like, you know how annoying that is, going for like a skin, trying to unlock something, and you're playing a bunch of sweats, and then you just want to pull out your your meta gun just so you can compete. It's just, it's a, so annoying. Oh, I mean, it's it's basically the reason BK won't play Warzone with me anymore. Because every time yeah. we fucking queue into a game, it's nothing but dudes with max out camos like fucking clapping us, mm -hmm. and it's like you you just farm a one point oh KD. Gun. Yeah, every every single person was just using the same fucking. Well, you I don't know, I don't know about today because I haven't played in, in a little well, bit, but like the MTZ. That's and kind the of Swarm. the problem, right? With modern gaming, like it, it's completely mm -hmm. different. Back in MW two, like the old MW two, everyone just kind of had fun, did their thing, and now it's like. Now everyone wants the best gear. Everyone's watching videos to have yeah. the meta weapons. Like the fact that even a meta weapon is a thing in a Call of Duty game with like, okay, I got to build my gun this very <laughs> specific way. It's mm -hmm. like, just, just God, man, I missed where it was just like, okay, am I going to use the ACR? Am I going to use the intervention? Like, okay. Like it just, mm -hmm. it was so much simpler. So I don't know. I remember like, maybe the systems have, just if, gone too complicated in COD. They need to go back to having something a lot more simple well, I or think basic. I, Here's your two attachments. I, there you I, go. I think that would make the customization better, but I don't think it fixes the problem. Because, like, I think everyone would still just gravitate toward whatever gun is determined Maybe, the but best. I think it wouldn't be as bad because if you're getting killed by that gun, you know, you just know what it is from the kill cam. How it is now, if I'm getting killed by, you know, these sweats using meta loadouts, like, I don't know mm -hmm. what the fuck they have on it, and now they have... Everything tuned. Well, they've removed the tuning in MW3, but it was yeah. a thing in MW2. So yeah. yeah, like when you have the gunsmith, like the way it is now, like th that makes it even more annoying because it's like I don't know what gun you're using. Let me go look up a guide. Actually, <laughs> let me just uninstall the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is yeah. crazy though, because like if you used to play like S and D and like COD4, or, like MW2, like th like three or four people like in the lobby minimum probably more maybe half the lobby were just using random shit like it'd be some dude using an LMG with an ACOG or like some mm -hmm. dude like there'd be, always be people using like some absolute jank today when I play S and D it's fucking um, is it twelve people in a lobby where it's eleven people using an MCW <laughs> like yeah it's just everyone yeah. using whatever whatever meta gun it is but 
Yeah, no, did you see, um, so in their little blog post or whatever, they said, like, SPMM has been around since COD4, and one of the COD4 right. devs responded and said, like, yeah, that's not true. He, he, he responded with two emojis. It was, did like, he? dog shit. <laughs> oh. I did see, I mean, when uh, there was an interview with Quinn Del Hoyo, yeah, Quinn Del Hoyo a while back, where he did, he also said there was skill-based matchmaking since COD 4, but I think he said it was, like, more relaxed, and yeah, it definitely yeah. felt more relaxed. I'm sure there was so. something, because back in the day, if you were on, like, a higher level, like a prestige account, you played higher level players, where if you were on, like, a brand new account, you did literally mostly yeah. play people who hadn't the even Christmas prestige. Moves. Yeah, I've heard yeah. that. So, like, there was something yeah, there. I, I'm, I almost think it might have been more, like, playtime or just level related. So you weren't just, like, ten, max 10th prestige. But, I mean, that would make sense because you gain mm -hmm. game knowledge as you play. Even if you're dog shit at the game, you'd at yeah. least have a better idea what's going on. Well, because was it COD 4? Right. One, one of the CODs, there was, like, a playlist that you could only play for a few, like, for the first, like, few levels. And then it, you couldn't play it Halo anymore. 3. That was Halo yeah, 3. Halo 3 had that training. Uh, that was, or, that was uh, also Halo 3. I think Halo, Halo, Halo 3 had it all, you know? It was uh, what was it called? Was it was it boot camp or training boot camp? Was called? Called? Something like I forget that. what the playlist was called. I thought it was like boot camp or something. Or maybe it was. I I yeah. don't remember, but alrighty. But it um, was a thing. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I the sad fact is I don't think SPMM's going anywhere. Even though like we mm. made it, like I think someone in a boardroom has determined it makes them more money, and that's all that matters. So. Well, well it there... wouldn't be in um, Max Defiant if that game ever came out. You know? <laughs> I, you know, maybe that's why it's not it, coming out. They can't it, release a game without skill based. Matching. It's kind of sad that I think that game is going to come out and just be a total like flop by the time it releases. Because I would have liked to see like here is a popular shooter with no SPMM. How does it actually feel to play in the modern age? Like. Is everything that we're that Jared's saying where it's like people just look stuff up, like everyone just uses meta shit. Is that true? Like, do even like shitter noobs look up whatever meta class in X Defiant, right. or is it because of SBMM that I'm playing people like that? And in X Defiant, we could have true, we could have actually found out. Like, but I have a feeling by the like, I just I don't feel like the game's gonna do anything. It's just gonna like be their next hyperscape. Like, it's gonna come out, get two days in the sun, and oh, just yeah. be dead. <laughs> like, it's just it's taking so long to come out, and I just. I don't think by the time it does, people are going to care. I think there's any chance it has the popularity that maybe the finals did? Maybe. Kind of the life cycle that that game's saying now? I, I, you could see something similar. I, I could. It probably comes out and people play it. You know, just because it'll be free to play and it's a new FPS game. And like, what other, what other new ones are there? Like, I, I think people will <laughs> yeah, check right. it out just for that. So whether or not people stick around will be the the true question and i just i don't know maybe they will hopefully i i hope I, think... they, I hope they've done something to the game significant since the last play test because like the fact that we had i know they they were they were working on like the networking or whatever but you know people having to wait this long when we should have got this game a long time ago it's like i think some people will expect there to be more there at launch instead of just the same game that they played during the last play test last year so yeah Alrighty. Well, I think that kind of wraps up. Uh, this was like a couple weeks ago, and I just want to bring it up because I thought it was funny. But uh, Midnight Studio, or whatever the fuck the name of Dr. Disrespect Studio was. I, Society. I, I, Midnight Society. I like that they uh, are also having layoffs, and they've never even released a game. So congrats to Dr. <laughs> Disrespect and the NFT lads. So you've, you've done well today. <laughs> so, <laughs> how do you not even release a game and you're already laying people off? Like, what the fuck <laughs> happened? <laughs> It's like that Friday thing. Why'd you get laid off on your on your day off? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I get I any... <laughs> like I, I get when like a lot of these studios put a game out and it does shit and they get there's like layoffs. Like when Immortals of Avion came out and it sold no copies and like most of the studio gets sacked. Like that sucks. But it makes me sad. It may like Is that it a good game, Jared. It, it's not bad. It's 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 not if. It, it, it's considered a good game any other year, probably, when it's not coming out next to fucking every major AAA game in history like Baldur's Gate. Yeah, that, that one probably just got fucked by when it launched and just, like, the year we were having. And it just... I don't know. It just came out and it wasn't amazing. So because of that, it's like, why would you play that over fucking Baldur's Gate, Resident Evil 3, Dead Space, Spider-Man 2, like, mm -hmm. even Starfield probably, like... The, well, the, Starfield for sure had like exactly. more fanfare, but yeah, yeah. 
But it, it released right in between Starfield, Sea of Stars, uh, Remnant 2. Oh, yeah. Right. I guess Remnant Exoprimal, Baldur's Gate 3. I mean, like, all those games came out in that little period. So it's like, man, it was screwed. Yeah. yeah this, not, oh, and uh, Armor Core 6. Can't forget that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It, dude, it, it, it had an uphill battle from the. <laughs> you know what's funny, though? That fucking EA did that again. They've already done that before. They already played that game with Titanfall like what multiple <laughs> times. They just thought, you know what, fuck it. Why don't we just do it again? Like <laughs> our games do really well when we just jam them in the middle of games <laughs> that have more fans. <laughs> but did you guys? Well, it's kind of the... like uh, they wanted the oh, tax write off. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, they really. Is that how it works when you actually release? I thought that's why games get canceled. No, oh, actually, I think that... if it. Uh... Think of it flops, you can do it. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay, okay. Actually, that bring. Oh, we'll we'll wrap it up soon because we've been going for a while. But I'm sure you guys saw like Blizzard had a survival day- game they've been working on forever that got completely canned. <laughs> Why were they making a survival game years. on a mobile game engine? <laughs> like, what what's going on over there? <laughs> Blizzard's a magical place, a place that doesn't <laughs> actually release good games anymore. They used to be a, a great. Great developer that drops really great games, and then Overwatch happened, and it changed everything. Overwatch, Overwatch one point five, or you want to <laughs> call it two if you want. I know, but yeah, that that game was I very mean, disappointing. That got me. I haven't played I haven't played Diablo four in a long time, but everything I hear about the game is not good. And I think like one of the new people in charge of Blizzard or at Blizzard, they're like, oh man, I love Diablo four. So I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Repeating the cycle. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, Blizzard Blizzard fell off, man. They used to make such good shit. And, like, I mean, original Overwatch was probably the last time they made a good game outside of, like, WoW expansions, right? Like, Heroes of the Storm yeah. was, a, was a... I mean, it wasn't, like, a mega flop, but, like, fizzled out. Overwatch 2, obviously, was a fucking shit stain. And really, they haven't even done much else. <laughs> like uh, they canceled a survival game, I guess. But I, I was gonna say, I, I think the Overwatch League is dead. I think they yeah, they, yeah, ca- they dead, dead. capped that too. You know, what I mean, like they all ended it. It's like the CDL League. They waited until that shit finished. That that's fucked up. Yeah, CDL's CDL's on its deathbed. They literally fucking had their first major, and then they fired. What was it like, fifteen out of the eighteen employees or something? It was something like that. Yeah. So not not good for the old CDL, but I will say those franchise leagues fucking are no fun to watch. Like I I actually not that I'm gonna watch Overwatch because I hate the game, but like I will watch more <laughs> competitive COD if it goes back to like open circuit. Like that's just just more fun to watch because like these big franchise leagues that you know like I just there's no like I get why like teams want to do that, but in, I just feel like it doesn't fit. Gaming. Well, but, like, even even like the LCS and shit's so boring compared to like yeah. when they used to have relegation and stuff back in the day. Like you get so hyped. Like will this challenger team knock out these fucking bottom of the barrel shitters that have done nothing all season? You like turn up and like double lift is smurfing for Team Liquid for some reason, like keeping them in the league. Like there's yeah. there's like actual fun storylines where now I just watch like fucking bottom feeders who don't want to spend money on a roster just put in r- rookies every year. Like, I, th- right. I think the the thing is the research shows that people actually cheer for logos like i thought that was yeah. crazy because i i like sports teams for the players but the I, it's like 80 percent of people literally just like it because of the like they have cheered for the team and they like the brand so i think what these companies are doing is they're banking on all right we're gonna have to have a couple years in the negative here but then one of these years people are gonna be like finally affiliated with we like these certain things and We'll, we'll get some return on the investment. I get that. And I think that makes sense. Like, obviously, that's worked in real sports because you have, like, a local attachment. Like, it's you, like, go to the games and stuff. But, like, we we saw before all these franchise leagues that you can build a fan base for an esports org. And you don't have to have, like, as long as you yeah. just put out, like, good teams and you, like, Optic got huge off of making COD content and having, like, a, I mean, they've never been the best. There was, like, a, a section during, like, advance or uh during like infinite warfare where they had like a year where they like won a bunch of shit but for the most part like Mm -hmm. optics never been the best team in call of duty but they're by far the most popular right and it's because they they did all the content stuff and they actually built a fan base and obviously they're in the franchise league now but even prior to that they were doing like plenty fine and and i feel like there's plenty of other esports orgs that have built fan bases but like the seat so 
those are like regular esports orgs, right? And then you have the CDL and the Overwatch League where they tried to do like they tried to force it. So you'd be like the San Francisco the San Francisco Surge or Shock the San Francisco Shock and like the Seattle Surge. And it's like I don't give a fuck about any of those teams. Like they they don't <laughs> no, like no one cares about them. Like they, they don't I like no no one's a fan of them. Like I don't know why they tried to like make these brands and force them. I don't know whatever. Mhm. All right, I think that'll do it for the old pod. Um, Depresso up there, what are you up to these days? Uh, Suicide Squad review will be out probably tomorrow at some point. So that's what we're doing. And then, uh, I don't know, Helldivers 2 is on the plate for a review. And maybe I'll get the Grand Blue uh, Fantasy. So All right. I guess keep an eye out. Fair enough. Marsman, thanks for joining us. What are you, uh, what are you up to? Appreciate having me on, and uh, I'm I'm lucky I have a team of uh, of uh, content creators along with me now. Uh, basically, I'm bringing it, it's like a family business. I got the brother and the cousin working on some stuff. So right now, the biggest one I'm working on, filmed and just editing, is the Fall and Rise of Cyberpunk. A nice little opinion look What's back different? at the dumpster fire, which was Cyberpunk, and how they've somehow clawed their way back. But gonna talk about some halo and then definitely hit those for february games coming up like final fantasy 7 rebirth and persona 3 reload that's those are just some games that are going to be hitting up this week uh this this month and giving some reviews so uh there, like i said appreciate you guys having me on yeah it was fun having you yeah for sure thanks for joining bhp uh you actually put out a video since the last podcast oh shit I did, and I finally uploaded. Um, and uh, there, there's more videos to come. I got some in the works. I do plan on being uh, more active, and my YouTube channel will actually be a an actual YouTube channel again. Mm. Hell yeah! Um, well, the, uh, I hope the next video is about Halo Three. I feel like we haven't had that topic in a in a couple of videos. Yeah, it's not, but you know, Unlock you. Uh, you. sometime in the future for sure. All right, all right. sure. BK, what do you what do you up to these days? Fucking playing Gotham Knights for some reason. But besides that, working. Right, well, Hand-drawing thumbnails perfect. for you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching the podcast. We'll be back in a couple weeks. I'll probably get the VOD up and shit tomorrow. So appreciate everyone for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.